Good evening, everybody. And welcome to the Tuesday, February 13th Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, Selectman Andy Friedman is not with us tonight, uh, but rest assured the, the four of us will be able to handle just about everything else. Uh, our standing agenda is uh, Selectman Liaison's reports and comments. I'll open the floor for public comment, if any. If you choose to say something, please stand, tell us your name and your street address. We'll hear briefly from our town manager uh, regarding a, a, an update over the last two weeks. We have a lengthy set of discussions tonight, and we're going to go, I think, fairly late into the evening. We're going to a, approve a Massachusetts School Building Authority statement of interest covering a boiler at RMHS that's uh, nearing at useful life. Uh, we're going to discuss and, and uh, propose the adoption of a housing production plan. We're going to have a brief discussion about new 40R projects, 40R being the smart growth district um, uh, that was voted recently to, um, in town meeting, specifically the permits revolving fund. We have two uh, changes of management or interest, one for Liquor Junction and one for Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. These are both fairly common when um, ownership changes or management changes, there's a requirement because of the liquor license to formally change the, uh, the named individuals, the responsible individuals. We'll have a discussion of safety. We'll preview the warrant for the April town meeting. Um, there is a plan to um, discuss selectmen's goals and um, we'll talk about that at about nine o'clock. There's also a proposal to discuss uh, Board of Selectmen policies, Article 1, General Operating Procedures. Um, we're short a person tonight, and I'm, I'm, I'd, I'll, I'll talk about that later, whether that makes sense or not. And finally, we'll close off the evening discussing Reading Municipal Light payments to the town and uh, a series of recent discussions on the matter of um, those payments and whether options exist regards, regarding RMLD. <coughs> We have four sets of minutes to approve tonight, so that's a full agenda. Probably it's going to take us to about 11. With that in mind, I'll turn to my uh, left for um, liaison report. Barry? Uh, just briefly, Mr. Chair, um, I believe um, all of us last night attended the Yes for Reading rally um, held at the Congregational Church. Um, a lot of energy, passion, excitement, um, uh, a lot of neighbors coming to learn about it, what they can do to help. Um, it was. Uh, a real good showing. Um, organizers are really on top of things. Um, and uh, it was just a, a, a joy to kind of watch people come together and figure out ways to how we can move this town forward. So um, glad to be a part of it and, uh, and, and to work on that going forward. Thank you. Dan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Board of Health will be meeting next Tuesday, the 20th. Uh, one of the items on the uh, agenda is uh, they're staying on top of the demolition of the uh, old Doucette storage building and in preparation for the building of Reading Village, the 40B project by the okay. people. And uh, they're getting uh, involved in, in regulating any potential uh, rodent control or other issues surrounding that demolition. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I had a meeting at 5.30 with Bob uh, with the uh, payment to the Town of Reading Subcommittee, uh, two members of the RMLD, two members of the CAB, which advise, advises the RMLD board. Uh, uh, I will say at this point there was a frank exchange of views, uh, which was very useful. We were trying to move things uh, off the diamond toward a uh, negotiated resolution before town meeting. We will have a more complete discussion on that later tonight. Okay. Thank you. John. Um, actually, I, I don't have anything specific. Um, <coughs> recreations meeting next door, and I know they've got a very full agenda, which I will report on afterwards. Unfortunately, I can never get to their meetings because they're right on top of this. Sure. Meeting. And in the interest of time, I think uh, everything else can wait till the next okay. time. And I have no comments. Uh, as Barry said, uh, we all attended last night. Very well attended activity for Yes for Reading. So, lots of work ahead. Uh, with that, I'll open it up for public comment. If somebody, if you'd like to speak, just stand up, raise your hand, tell us what's on your mind. You can ask a question, you can vent an opinion, whatever you'd like. Yes, ma'am. I am Lorian Milano, 94 Eaton Street. And I'm Mike Flynn from 190 Green Street. So we, I wrote to the board and to the town manager, mm -hmm. town staff, regarding some concerns we have about safe harbor interpretation mm -hmm. that was presented previously. 
So Mike did lots of research, got opinions from state agencies. Uh, he communicated it to the town two weeks ago, so we would like an update. Bob? Um, you folks went to the 5.30 meeting. I wasn't able to go there. So. Okay. Um, I think Ray just expressed an opinion before the meeting. Did yeah, he did. I, I think, as I would cast it, the view is that um, there is a view from the state that we've received that would, if read as we read it, would allow Safe Harbor to be invoked, but to also allow the parties to continue to work. It's, in effect, um, an agreement to hold stasis in place, but allow the two parties to continue to work. Um, the, the, so safe harbor would be invoked, as it would be in any case, and then through some process, I'm not entirely clear, that the developer, the town, and presumably the interested parties would have a chance to continue the conversation to some, to some successful outcome. That's the feedback we've got so far. And I, I heard about that tonight for about a half an hour ago. One thing I'll add that I know, and, and I am getting the second hand, so I apologize for that. Um, I don't usually give second hand info, but um, I've heard that the, the, the developer, through his attorney, has agreed to sign a legal document that will allow the town to continue the negotiations and still have the power of the safe harbor. So, so because the, the legal wording from the state is quite honest and somewhat confusing, um, one, it could be interpreted different ways by different attorneys. In recognition of that fact, the developer is, I think, taking a very good positive step of letting the town continue the safe harbor protection well beyond the first 15 days, so if it so chooses. So an important aspect of this is the ZBA actually notifying the developer within the first 15 days of exactly, the project exactly. that we have safe harbor that we're choosing to, to invoke. Exactly. Right. But mm -hmm. Uh, reserve the right to invoke it. Yes. All right. Well, actually, well, it, would be, it, it would be invoked, be invoked in all cases. And then it would, conversations would still yes. happen. Sure. Yeah, it does seem that the you would invoke it, and that's something we would do. But not deny the project. No. That allows, Correct. What it allows so we don't deny the project. Yeah, it allows oh, the... Understood yeah. that this is not the board's yeah. decision. Yeah, yeah. We just want to make sure that... The, the right approach going in because it's a very limited time frame mm -hmm. that the town yeah. has to make the right decision. The meeting, the, the meeting we just got out of conveyed the 15 day window, the, the process by which, if we understand it correctly, it would proceed. And uh, I, I think that's at the we present would, time. Pardon? We would appreciate it if you keep people informed because we would like to have some clarity. Absolutely. This is fresh information, and as Bob says, the, lang the language from the state is not entirely clear. It's written in l lawyer speak, not in people speak. So, so has the town considered getting a 40B advisor? Uh, it's, it's a pretty common practice in, in other towns. Um, it's actually, you know, the, a bunch of towns go about it different ways, but Mass Housing Partnership actually provides a free 40B um, uh, let me give you the right 40B technical assistance program. Okay. Uh, the town can sign up for it. It's hmm. they'll there's a list of consultants that they pick from based on who has time and they'll assign a consultant to the town and they'll this is somebody that works with 40B projects every day and knows the, the project. I've, I've had experience doing it before. I will speak quite candidly. That's the process we started at the train depot. Uh -huh. And the person the state picked was completely unsatisfactory, so we used our own town council hmm. and had a much better result. Uh, we town council is fully engaged in this process if he needs additional resources we'll certainly acquire them all right and as if memory serves me um he has a staff attorney yes. yeah, that is an expert on it is an expert on 40b yeah. right. i mean when we used that facility the last time uh, honestly it was it was almost like he was representing the other side mm -hmm. is the way that is the way we our takeaway was, the was and so with that in mind we brought our own expert in through you know through the town council and fortunately because he does have somebody on staff um, we and we'll certainly you know bring you know this um, this is a really new thing for our town having the safe harbor avenue I think and yeah More it's actually new in the state from outside that has experience with this uh, even if we only take their you know their advice at council and, and make our own decisions. It, it still has someone that has experience doing this every day, telling you where they've seen, what, they, what they've seen other towns do, mm -hmm. what they've seen other projects. Our, 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 the firm that represents us does this with other towns as well, so. 
Um, I think the fear is the state, the motivator of the uh, consultant may not be aligned with the motivations of the town or the motivations of the neighborhood because it's not paid for. So their economic interests are being paid by somebody else. So they follow they follow that motivation. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but the attorneys, the, sorry, go ahead. The 40B is, is just that, it's an advisor. The town still has the right to make their own right. decisions. <coughs> Um, so I think that's worth it to keep in mind. Is I, don't, I don't think we're rejecting We're not beholden to right. yeah. anything that person says. Right. We, we can bring someone in and decide that they're not they're not doing us justice and we want to go our own route, yeah. continue to go our own route. I don't think but we're rejecting it. It is what we did the last time. It is, it is you know, I think, especially considering there's already some confusion associated with the law, it seems to make sense to bring someone in that may help decipher this. Well, um, the problem with the confusion is our town council asked a very clear, I'll send you the email, black and white question of the state. Mm -hmm. They answered it by running around the mulberry bush. That is what we deal with. So when you say it's not clear, I agree with you. It's not clear. Um, we're asking clear questions and not getting frank answers. That's Candidly, that's the answer. So that's why we believe using our own resources, using our own money, and hiring our advocate for our best interests is the best way to serve this process. I think pretty much everyone in the room has the same objectives on this, which is and, and to, your to point do of things yeah. the best for the whole community. Um, the problem is the process is difficult, <coughs> and that's not the rules that any of us set. I know this sounds perhaps like a um, we should know more about this. I think we don't go through 40Bs terribly often. We don't go through ones in Safe Harbor ever, to my knowledge. Our motivation, my personal motivation, is to get a project that's good for the neighborhood and good for the town. They have my commitment to make that happen. We'll find every way to be clear and, and uh, not just transparent with data, but actually tell you the, to the best of our knowledge what's going on. And we'll use all the the resources that we have to get that done. Um, and I'll, I'll forward you the email we got today from the state, and you can make your own conclusion. That would be, that would be appreciated. Yep. Yeah, and you know, anything we can do to, sure. to, as a neighborhood, have a seat at the table to sure. help that discussion, help move that along. Would be I understand. I would, I would like to actually ask, has the town staff started discussions with the mayor members on the town position for this, for this development? I guess there was a meeting at 5 o'clock earlier tonight with some ch the chair and vice so, chair. So I'm I'm just, well, I mean, the chair isn't here accusing himself from... I guess it was the vice chair. I didn't go. Uh, John, I'm sure Dave was not there. Yeah, no, the chair no, rec no. has recused himself no. completely from this right. project. Okay. So, so I was wondering if the town is open to hearing input from the residents when making recommendations to the CBA because... Uh, we, we feel sure. we can make a contribution. And sure. Even Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, there, that's, and you have that right at the, at the hearing <coughs> as well. I was just going to say. I think that the town making recommendations without giving our input makes it not optimal. It's not an optimal going as separate parties. We agree. Parties. We agree. You get, but you have a, you have that's a, not how we operate. That's not how we operate. No. So we know that there is an upcoming uh, meeting of the development review team. So mm -hmm. we want to request to have representatives present. That's I'm, I'm not aware of that meeting, but I'm assuming there is one. And no, that's not a public meeting. The developer will not come if public is there, quite candidly. The earliest that's our experience. Yeah, the earliest opportunity we could do it is on the meeting on March 7th for the hearing itself. Is there a DRT before ZBA begins? It's tomorrow. Okay. It's a staff so meeting. How, what is the mechanism? Are you, I, I, I would think you would be interested to hear from the president in that position. And the proper avenue is through the ZBA hearing process. That's absolutely where you have the loudest voice by far. I understand that, but if Town staff is making recommendations that you want to kind of I guess we're, we're not making the same kind of recommendations you might imagine. Police and fire are there for public safety reasons. Um, can a fire truck make this turning rate? Right. Um, things like that. It's very technical. It's, it's are members from the CPDC that were not, members, not commissioners, but uh, no. representatives? So no, it's all not involved in staff. So I understand staff, but staff mm -hmm. that work with the CPDC or. Um, well, so I guess you say police and fire, but who else is involved? Police, fire, engineering, so, yeah. planning staff, uh, board of health. So, are you open to so planning is involved in this? Sure. I mean, that's an important aspect that the town, that the public should be engaged in. But I, again, I emphasize um, from past experience, these are private meetings where there's a very frank discussion between the staff and the developer. Extremely frank. Those discussions would not happen in public. 
I, the developer and his attorney, I assume, are the key participants. It seems to be unbalanced. You mean that the ambassador is quite a factor that is having no say? This is the opposite of public. The public meeting. You're right. It, it, we're not. Meeting. We're not shaping the project. The project begins on when ZBA opens the hearing. We are giving technical advice to the developer, not not the, not at all the same kind of things that you're going to talk. Bob, about. what are what are examples of that device? If you said turning radius, uh, yeah, I think of, that would be helpful. To you see. know, width of the road. You know, for a sub for a subdivision, for instance, width of the road. It has to be this wide in order for a fire truck to be able to get down, hit a turning radius, and come out. Can the ladder reach the top of the building? Can, yeah. So it's things like that. It's not the size and scope and massing and setback. Not the appearance of the project. It it's very technical <coughs> things. Just want to add a point about peer review. Do you discuss uh, traffic then during this meeting? I have. Sorry, my name is Diane. I live at Three Smith Avenue. Hi, Diane. Hi. Uh, what's the last name, Diane? Lovinch. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I have no idea if tra this traffic is covered itself at the DRT. I would imagine it's a little early. We only have the traffic study provided by the developer, and I would imagine that would take would have to uh, evaluate to see if we agree that the sample points were set right, if the time of day was set right. You know, Walkersburg Drive is a pretty busy place with shopping on the weekend, not so busy necessarily on, on working days. So, but I don't know technically if, if traffic is part of the it's DRT. It's interesting to hear this sitting here and hearing both sides, because it, it doesn't feel very transparent, and I understand this is the procedure mm -hmm. that you've always used, but this is actually a case where it's not just residents about the size of the building and the aesthetics. We actually have some technical issues, and we have people in our neighborhood who have background in engineering, in, you know, planning. So I feel like architecture, construction, it seems like a situation where it might behoove everyone to, for us to be involved earlier on. I know you keep saying about the ZBA meeting. That seems pretty late in the game. It's actually the, that's it's the actually beginning. The of the, of the that's game. the beginning of the game. Yeah, um, and that's really it, you know these hearings will go on for hours and hours, and and all input will be sought. There's nobody keeping you away from the table, and the decision is going to be made up front, a, a, out in out in the open. So. Uh, of the DRT meetings, absolutely. Yeah. Those are public. Those, be, those become public. We've requested those in the past, and we were told that meetings aren't kept and they aren't public. You always keep minutes, right? And, they, and then they're sent to CPDC, so they become public. So I don't know why you got that impression. So can we have access like the next, within the next two days, whatever, you know? Like I, I don't know what the, the approval process is. So, yeah. A lot of projects, this is not the only project that we're doing in the town. But if they the next week, yes. time, right, because the timing is critical. I don't mean to, you know, I might understand that you have a lot of work, but I'm just saying, I should trust you. Because if we don't yeah. know, then we go into the ZBA meeting without formal knowledge. So, so. so it sounds like minutes are public. It sounds like you haven't gotten minutes from past meetings. Are there dates in particular you're looking for that you know of? Two meetings in the past we have the dates that we would like to see. Do you know the dates? Yes, we it, it, what, are the, what are the, do you know them right now? Or? Okay. If you would do that, we'll try to chase down the minutes for you. It's all on the website. Jean Delios, assistant town manager. The um, the website has a lot of information. Can you navigate there, Bob? There on sure. this project, including DRT. Okay. Can write to you. I think we're looking for it right now. Go to apartments. Yeah. Oh, sorry, board. Well, while you're looking, I, I want to talk about another part of the process that will happen at ZBA after a plan is presented. There will be a number of waivers generally sought by the developer from setbacks, from other aspects. Uh, the, the town can hire experts to evaluate every one of those waiver requests, and that gets built back to the developer. So that that's an important part of the review process. So traffic, ZBA. for example, that's a good an place independent for traffic peer, study. We can challenge yeah, a traffic yeah, study, for instance. Yeah. Sure, we understand. Yeah. And, and, and you'll have that opportunity. Right. Copiously. Let's let her finish. What I would like to request, I don't know if you are interested in that, but the contract is going to be presented to the board. And we would like to <coughs> give you our, our perspective, not a negative perspe perspective of the development. We have some thoughts and suggestions which I believe 
should be out there. And this is the we're problem. looking for a public forum which will be heard. And we haven't been very successful in our attempts to talk to the town so far. You don't think the ZBA hearing is the right place to do that? I think there's concern that that's too late or that decisions okay. are getting made before. Do you think that the decisions have been made, that private conversations, informal discussions, do you feel there's lack of transparency in the way the process is currently um, just from my vantage point, I have no problem at all with, with you being involved as long as it's not detrimental to the developer process, but anything else is for fair game. Bob has on the screen, is this from July of 17? Is that one of the dates you were looking for? It's under a different <coughs> department. It was well, under, it's under the ZBA. It's on the Eaton Lake 240 B webpage. And is there more than one there? You go right here under ZBA. Under minutes? There's a whole bunch of you know information, I'll just say. Yeah. Have you seen that one before? Yes, we, we yes so, so, sorry, Bob. Yeah. Where, where was that in the, the link, sir? Go back and navigate to that thing you just opened. Yeah, I got to find <laughs> It's one of those hidden little ones. Gene to the rescue. Here we go. Uh, no. No. Just kidding. Comment left. Well, we know the comment letter, but this is not the minutes for me. Well, the there minutes are at the end of the comment letter. It's referenced in the letter, and then it's included <coughs> as an attachment. Is there more than one date, you said? No, two dates. Okay. Oh. I can communicate with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, have a look and see if, if, if the comments and the things discussed, I don't know, are different from what I've told you or what you've expected, I suppose. Well, I think as you get to planning and traffic, it, it gives suggestions of what the traffic study should include. Uh, well, there's traffic right yeah, there, yeah. that's one reference. <coughs> Not much there, up there, obviously it's high. I see your point uh, that this would be interesting to the neighborhood. <coughs> it does. I, I completely understand the fire and the police, yeah. and there's, there's very specific <coughs> code aspects that the fire and the police are looking to, but it seems like the, the meeting goes beyond that. Well, there's a wide scope. As I mentioned, all the you know, parties that were present, including I didn't mention the light department. Yeah, and, and in this specific one, there is conservation land nearby. So again, you know, reasonably short, shortly after, um, these meetings held, you know, these minutes do get published. So, so we feel, at least our understanding, the process, the process is between the developer and the town. And we can express our comments in the public session, but we're not really a part of this proceeding. So the town should represent our viewpoint. And we would like to communicate to the town. And we haven't found the right avenue at the moment. Do you have something written that you could give to us? We would like to do a presentation. <coughs> well, I think maybe the the issue here is one of understanding the process for better or worse. Um, in in my mind, as a non-expert, the process begins when the ZBA opens the hearing. Um, whatever discussion has gone into, and we sometimes spend a year having discussions on issues. We are trying to prepare the developer for the public discussion and what the town will be concerned about from our past experience. Um, using a train depot project as an example, uh, once the hearing began, the project changed rapidly based on public input. So we're just getting the developer ready for the first meeting, if you will, trying to prepare them and say, do a traffic study. These are the things you should be concerned about <coughs> making decisions. We're just giving them advice on how to present a project in Reading. And my impression is the project, that's just prep work. No decisions are made, um, you know, the developer decides how to present the project. But the decisions are made through the ZPA process in a 40B, very much so through CPDC and other projects. So the design guide sounds like working assumptions that the, <coughs> working assumptions that the uh, t town puts, up, <coughs> puts upon the project. But not the design elements themselves. It's traffic study, it's water, it's sewer, it's uh, right. egress, ingress. Yeah. But they're really just the corners of the map. They're not what the, well, the design will actually contain. They're the, they were the areas of concern. Yeah, and depending on the developer, I, I will say this developer has been fairly open, looking for advice. Other developers aren't interested in this advice. Um, you know, the advice can be in range, uh, honestly. 
you know, we, they want to get more familiar with the neighborhood, so we had to tell them about the park that's just down the street. We said, you know, you've got a park not far away, you should consider this. Um, you know, we're not, again, not making decisions, we're just giving them information on the community and the location in the community, so when they start the process, they will be able to have a good conversation with you. So do you feel you have sufficient information that's not what I said. I said the, pro the process begins at the first night of the ZBA. That's when the community needs to say whatever it needs to say. So if you wanted to make a 10-minute presentation on the first night, I don't... Sorry? If you did, I, I wouldn't see necessarily any problem with it. Um, would fit it into the discussion. I'm sure the developer... I mean, actually, that's how, it, that's how it starts. Right. It opens. Yeah. I don't Absolutely. see there's a problem with that at all. John? I, I think that... I mean, I've been to a couple of these, right? and the way it starts is the developer rolls. And I think what these citizens are asking, they've actually, it sounds like, they've, they've assembled themselves and put a lot of energy into <coughs> how this is going to affect their neighborhood. And it sounds like they're actually prepared to make a presentation in a similar way that a developer would, understanding that the you know the the person the developer owns the property and the developer you know has certain rights and abilities to develop it we have certain obligations and i mean i i haven't heard anything that you know disquiets that so it sounds like you know they would like agenda time and it sounds like you the zba might be a place to do that um because they're going to hear from the developer i know it's not something we've heard in the past but we haven't heard neighborhoods organized in this way around the impact of their neighborhood. Now, this is the first time we've had a project under Safe Harbor. It's the largest single project I think I've seen in a compact neighborhood. Something like Pulte Homes in South Maine is adjacent to the highway. It's already open land. Johnson Woods was a former farm, but this is kind of plopped in the middle of yeah. a dense neighborhood with a, with a this, as far as I can tell. So I'm exactly where you are, John. I'm, I'm fine with if you guys want it. We'll fit it in somewhere during the evening. I think the developer wants to start to kind of describe a baseline thought. Yeah, it's actually, it, I mean, the, yeah, the zoning board. I want to make sure you, you understand, you've not, not missed sure, any sure. opportunity to present your side at all. We, we just want to be sure that mm -hmm. we'll have our seat. The ZBA yeah. should absolutely, that's the right. reason they're having a public table. hearing. It's your home. We can make a recommendation to the ZBA. Bob, I don't think we disagree with you, and we understand that once the project opens, we have the opportunity to We want to make sure we do have to see the table that there's time for us to provide our comment because we, we have been uh, reviewing this in detail. And then we also want to make sure as decisions get made, like safe harbor and what the, uh, what the process is behind that, that that's understood because those are decisions that have to be made early. Those are decisions Correct. that Correct. We, we need a full understanding of. And that's, that's part of why we're here tonight rather than waiting for a ZBA meeting is that Okay. Who's the point of contact for the group, or what, what email address? Oriana or myself. Okay. Oriana. So we'll send you a copy. Is it okay to send a copy of that state opinion? Oh, yeah. We just got it today. Okay. So we'll send you a copy of that language. You can tell us what you think it says. Um, we'll take it from there. So okay. it sounds like what you're really going to be doing at the ZBA is it's a public hearing. So they're going to look for public yeah. comment. I would suggest to you that as a courtesy to, to them, that you let them know you actually have, you have an assembly. You have an assembly of neighbors who have put the time into a presentation that your public comment would be 10 minutes, 12 minutes, somewhere. And I think that that's just a courtesy to them. And I would say to you, Mr. Chairman, that if you guys would like to get some get on one of our agendas, oh, absolutely. I think you should do that. Um, and I and I'm guessing that would be our next meeting. Yeah. Although it would just be with us, it wouldn't be the developer, yeah, just because... Like yeah. You, as our elected officials, to be on the same page. Absolutely. We would like to yes. tell you what we think, what we've researched. We've put lots of time and effort, and we believe we can bring something to the table. We're not just trying to stop it. Yeah. We're trying yeah. to make it better. We're trying to make it yeah. appropriate. Right. And, and, and John, anything that we do prepare, we would provide at, at, you know, ahead of time That's so good. that the developer has a chance to look at it because just like we wanted a chance to look at the project before it goes, yeah. Uh, before it opens on March 7th, you know, I'm sure they want to understand where our department is. I don't hear a battle here, I hear a process. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's you know, highly that, yeah. appropriate. Yeah. Th that this board wants to see the best project there. We and, all around so, you. Yeah. so we, we think this project can be 
doesn't sure. that, I, that's really nice to hear that. I, I would endorse if you want to present to us that that's helpful. You don't have to. You can do it just at this evening. I want to kind of see uh, get a reaction. Kind of lay out our perspective and what we see as priorities, okay. and just create some context because you guys heard from the developer, and I think yes. there's there's a need for some balance. In this <laughs> Understand. And we want to kind of ensure that we allow the whole because maybe you don't depend on the <laughs> So we do. Okay. Somebody, could, we, could we put them on our next agenda, Bob? Is there time? I'll check. I'll have to look. Well, how much time would you think you need? 20 minutes? Yeah. Why don't we call it 20 minutes? If you, We have, may have questions that take you. Uh, probably comment on for us as well. <laughs> we don't get anything done. Right. And minutes. it would be on the agenda. I have not a half an hour. raise your hand. Half half. Half. The big this is a dedicated <laughs> portion. That, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we're trying to... We're, um, I'm just looking for the agenda for next week. Here's oh, here it is. Uh, I'm closing the warrant. <coughs> Girl Scouts are first. They're most important. Yep. We wouldn't want to go with them. <laughs> There's room in there. Yeah, I think so. I think somewhere in this area. So if we said like eight. Eight thirty. Eight thirty, probably. Is that okay? I need to talk to. We Ray. could take our policies to the back end. Yeah. Yeah, we might be able to put them ahead of the uh, eight o'clock. And have Ray come a little later. Our town councilor. I mean, if the you take a look, it's only ten minutes, right? Most of that is is <coughs> stuff that we is housekeeping stuff for us. Yeah. Or, or right. Most yeah, of it is. So, so we'll so get we back could to certainly plug you right. in earlier yeah. and before Sharon. In between. We'll yeah. get you a specific time, probably by email, but something in order. Yeah, you bring it on a memory stick. If you and want, you can, you can bring it or send it to me. Actually, you, be, you, like. you know what? It just because um, it's helpful to kind of I read everything ahead of time. So if, if it's possible to get to Bob, so yeah. that it could be included in our packets before Thursday. Yeah, previously. Well, whenever you well, have, look, whatever you whatever have, you can do. Yeah. Whatever you can do. I mean, we see presentations here all the time right. that are first time we see them, and they're not in the packet. Yeah, you don't. But have it happens it, all the time, it, it, and right. that's. If you, you know, have, have it, to put them under that kind of that would be helpful. Yeah, just, yeah, if something changes, we'll let right. you know. Where That's fine. You can make game game day changes. That'll engage, that'll engage you, questions. And I think it's a more fine. fruitful discussion. An outline is fine. So Your PowerPoint, I personally right. don't. I mean, we see PowerPoints all the time that are not part of our package, <laughs> but we have a little bit of an outline knowing right. what we're going to be hearing about, and so that seems. Yeah. Reasonable. We're going to have questions too, so I think if you've got 10 minutes of material, I'd allocate 30 minutes overall. And if you're short, we'll just accelerate the rest of the evening. Okay. So we'll get back to you with a date and a time. Well, I think we. I think we've got a date. 27. 27. To talk to Ray. Right. Yeah, we'll, uh, it's somewhere in that range. Yeah, but we'll. I, you'll I, know it'll that. It'll either be the 27th or the meeting thereafter, but we'll work on it being the 27th. Okay. When does uh, actually the meeting thereafter is? I think is that the, same, the night of the hearing? No. No, I'm sorry. Okay. It's the 13th. Probably better March yeah. seventh. This is a good night. When does the ZBA hearing start? The seventh. Yeah, so we'd have to do it on the twenty seventh. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a good evening. Thank you. Yes. My name is Kevin Signetti. I'm a resident, forty-five year resident of Smith Avenue, Thirteen Smith Avenue. Um, uh, I'm now semi-retired, so I can now spend some time in front of you guys uh, discussing various and sundry things. But I probably should have gone first rather than second because I know what safe harbor is. I know how it applies to retirement plans. <coughs> However, I don't know how it applies to this project. So if you could give me about a, a pricey version mm -hmm. of safe harbor. Gene? Sure. Um. Grab a mic. So, the safe harbor is a provision of state law. Everything that we're talking about here has to do with state law. Nothing to do with what the town's zoning is or the town's regulations are in any way. These are all state regulations. So essentially, in these state regulations, and it's on the state website, mass.gov, and you can look under um, 40B regulations, and there is a provision that if a city or town has a certified housing production plan, which we're going to be talking about the update to the housing production plan tonight, then... I want to stop you there for a second. Yes. 
What are you referring to by certified housing production plan? A plan that the state has sanctioned. The, the town has put a plan together that says, we understand that there's a state law that says we have to have 10% of all of our housing units as affordable. Okay, that's what I would like you to, you know. Okay. So that's what the state law says. Mm -hmm. You have to have 10% minimum affordable housing in your and community. And does that 10% have to be in one area of the town? No, no but it has to be town. deed restricted. I understand. I used to work for the city of Peabody. We had 700 mobile homes. That we got credit for none of those, <coughs> even though they were affordable housing. Sure. It did not qualify. Okay. So deed restricted units. So are you saying the safe harbor uh, provision strictly deals with the 10% of um, uh, low income housing? This all, this whole topic has moderate. to do with it's how do we... It's low and moderate income, it's not all yeah. low income. How do we meet the state regulations around this requirement for 10% affordable housing? Let me stop you there for a minute. You know, because I've been here for 45 years, I've seen an incinerator that was built and cost almost $2 million dollars never used. I've seen the dump converted to, and we never realized it was going to start 60, 60 feet above street level. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize that the lighting was going to be what it was uh, by the developer. We've seen Pearl Street School <coughs> closed down because of the fact that um, uh, it was unsafe for kids, but now it's assisted living. So I think that there are a number of, of us who have been around for quite some time who are very concerned <coughs> with what's going on, especially with this potential project. And I know who the Zionists are. I'm familiar with them. I'm, and I know the trucking and so forth mm -hmm. and so on. So I'm sorry. That's okay. Let's just continue. So part one of, of Safe Harbor is you have to have a certified housing production plan, mm -hmm. which we have. Sure. And we're updating tonight so that we'll have one for the future. Mm -hmm. Part two is... <coughs> that certified production plan have to do with the schools as well and the, and the overpopulation of kids in the schools as we have seen and I think it's uh, not very expandable mm -hmm. the schools. Not really. The, no. pr the housing production plan is exactly what it says. Okay. How are you going to get to 10%? Oh, sure. Show me your production plan. Okay. That's what is there any waiver that can be given on that for some period of time? That's what the safe harbor is. So let me, if I can just... Above, what I'm saying is, if we have to hit 10%, by what time? So this is, if you can just let me walk you through this. So part one is having this certified plan that says this is how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Part two is a provision that says <laughs> if you produce <coughs> half of 1% or 1% in a calendar year, then you could qualify for either a one-year or a two-year safe harbor. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, we produced enough to qualify for, and we had, we had a one-year safe harbor. We got an increase to a two-year safe harbor because of the units that we produced and how it matched with that 1%. And now what does that mean, Gene, that we have it? What, what benefit does that in your to the town? So under a safe harbor, you're allowed to, the zoning board can invoke this safe harbor and say, we have, you know, we have the safe harbor. This now allows us to go forward with this zone comprehensive permit application, but with the idea that at some point, if the negotiations and the project does not proceed, that, that it can be denied because the reason that this, this whole process is so important is a comprehensive permit is not a local local provision. It's a provision under the state. And that's what, the for, that's what 40B is. It's mm -hmm. under, so all under the state. the developer can come in and do pretty much what they want. Right. So we can't, the zoning board could open up, let's say we didn't have a safe harbor, the zoning board could open up the public hearing and say, we don't like the project, we're going to deny it. Well, all the developer has to do is appeal it to the state, and 99% of the time, if you don't have a safe harbor, they're going to say, you're denied. You don't have grounds. You don't, you're not at 10%. Mm -hmm. this, this is why we have this provision. This, this comp permit is for communities who aren't at 10%, except if you have a safe harbor, you have another, a further ability <coughs> under the statute to say no. Okay, and you'd have to meet the 10% over what period of time, though? Well, it's a whole 
process of how the state counts the units, and you you have to tempt the losses. You have to be at ten percent. If you're not there, forever, forever. If you're not there, you're subject to these comprehensive well, we permit applications. We're not at ten percent now. We're not at ten percent. Right. Okay. We generated enough to have a safe harbor. Right. right. It showed but we're not good at ten percent. Effort. Yep. So what well, percent are we now? Nine point three five. Nine point three five. So in the event that this project goes through, um, then it would bring it up to 10%. <laughs> right. But then you'd have to do the census again. The census. And then, I, then, I understand then, that. Then it rolls the, the challenge with this way of this that state calculates is they only add projects to the numerator, not the denominator. Right. So every 10 years, as the US census is updated, but if the, the census denominator is stable, <laughs> we're at 10%. Then, the then state could then de 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 uh, demand that we go at fifteen percent. No. No. no, 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 no. It'll just be ten percent of the no. of now what your housing units are. So, if you built five hundred units, that right. gets added to your denominator. So now you have to. Did we look create. at that at all when we did the project on West Street, in terms of the the units that are there? Did we look at that when we did the project up on top of Route Twenty Eight? All of that is calculated as part of the yeah, SH. Yeah. It is. It's yeah. already baked in. What she's saying is, once you're a ten. You can say no without consequence. You right. have meet the. However, <laughs> what 10 means gets reset every 10 years because right. right. the number of houses in the pool has grown over the 10 but year if span. If we continue to develop a number of complexes in the, in the town of Reddick, then we will then need more low and middle income. You're always going to be chasing it because. You have to be a ten percent. So if you're adding to your housing, stuff, I understand what you're saying. So, that, but, what so yes, saying. you're right. Yeah. You're gonna. Okay. We're gonna have to keep doing okay. this. But if we're at the ten percent, we're still gonna have to create affordable housing. But if a developer comes in and wants to do the next Eaton Lakeview, and I, I want to put 120 units in there, we have our ten percent in a safe harbor. We can say, no. Okay. At this particular point, under which circumstances could we have um, that project not go through? None. I don't see how that's possible. We could delay. We could delay it. We can delay it. But then we have less why, leverage. Why are we doing this then? The, the concept is because the developer is motivated to complete. They own the asset. Times change. Environments change. Economies change. They want to get something done and get out. So. The purpose of the safe harbor in this setting is to achieve a better <coughs> project and encourage the developer to make perhaps some concessions in return for allowing the project to occur sooner. The Time is money for the developer. Right. Right. Otherwise, he I just see. can wait till the safe harbor runs out, yeah. and then he can build whatever he wants. And you know, we could raise our hand and say, well, we think you should do this. And they'll say, well, I take it under advisement, but no. Because he, his whole the comprehensive permit just pretty much takes everything out of the town's hands. We have the ability to shape the project better if we work with the developer um, than we do if we don't. And you know, you have a choice. You could do nothing for two years and or one year now because one year is consumed one year ahead as we sit here today. And then at the end of that period, you're no worse, you're no better off than as if you. Um, had nothing to start with. You were basically, it's time out, game over. The thought is to try to get a better project for both the neighborhood and the town by providing incentives for the developer to, to make some concessions in return for a faster start date because he's carrying the property, he's got all, he's got uh, taxes he's paying, he wants to recover that cash and sell it off. And the, well, and the economy can be very different in a year and a half or 18 months. So what looks great today doesn't look so good in a year and a half from now. So he's as interested in getting out as quickly as he can too. So it's a win-win if you play it well. We own, we, own, it's, we own an option right now. And an option over time will disappear. And so that option we have is valuable. It's a very cheap option at this point. Yeah. Well, it was very much. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know, I don't know about that. That's all we have. <laughs> okay. It, it, right, and one other you. thing, as of just a point of reference, uh, you mentioned a family name here who are not the developers of that project, just so you're clear. They're the owners of the, of the land. No. Not anymore. Not, not anymore. anymore. <coughs> I, you know, we just have to be... Thank you. No, not, for, not for two years now. Thank you. So we're hoping that this process yep, will sorry. go better than the one on Lincoln Street, where we didn't have a safe harbor to it. To yeah. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. So. Bob? I just want to make sure, maybe this is clear, but just for anyone listening, 
some of the dense housing projects you mentioned also brought along affordable units with them. Yes, they did. Um, we have always required a minimum of 10%. Which so then impacted the schools. It, it may have impacted the schools. It impacted although, the cost. If you look at our economic development website, you'll see it didn't have much of an impact on the schools other than near where I live. The, for, uh, for Reading Woods. Yeah, yeah the Reading Not Woods. for Archstone. Yeah. Um, but just, just to be clear, some towns put in the, a dense housing project and don't require any affordable components. And then they really fall behind yep. the 10%. We have always required at least 10% and normally 20 or 25. So any time a, a dense housing project is coming in for whatever other economic costs or benefits it has, we're not losing to this affordable housing 10% uh, mark, just to be clear. Thank you. Yep. We have the public comment. Mr. Yes, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Uh, I'm going to cut it short. You said to me you wanted to sit down over a cup of coffee over the removal of the cemetery building from the uh, capital plan. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Did Go ahead. you remove it or did the town manager remove it? Town meeting removed it. And the uh, FinCom recommended it be removed. Yeah, but according to the charter, you guys go over the uh, capital plan. Did you know it before town meeting or did you not know it? That's on yes. the job. I did not know that it had been removed before town meeting. I will apologize to you then, hopefully. And the town manager did it without our picking up later. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see you tomorrow, Bill. <laughs> and and let, let me know. Bob and I are still good friends. We always will. Any other public comment? Thank you. Yes. Uh, Nancy, Dr. Postry. I know later on tonight you're going to be reviewing your policy on volunteer appointments. <laughs> not, to, uh, yeah. no. not tonight. No, it's another it's time. It's the Article 1 tonight, which yeah. Article 1, I don't believe, is volunteer appointments, is it? No. Be two, two, yeah, it's, it's in two weeks, I believe. Yeah. Thanks. I'll be back. Okay. Bob? Um, what's on your agenda is actually only a piece of Article 1, just to be clear. It's communication, right. and social media, and so forth. It's a fraction of, of, art, of uh, Section 1, Article 1. Other public comment, if you'd like to speak, just raise your hand, tell us who you are, what's on your mind. Seeing none, Bob? <coughs> Any, public, any comments? Um, I just want to make a couple of quick comments. Um, one is this coming Thursday, the Finance Committee will vote a budget. I know there's been a lot of interest in financial information, override information, and just to state it publicly, it's um, a bit of a jump of the gun, if you will, to uh, put information up on the website until the Finance Committee has actually given a budget, because it's the Finance Committee's budget that will go to town meeting. And, you know, depending on what they do Thursday, the superintendent and I will then react and, and design documents appropriately. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um, at your next meeting, town council will be present uh, as you close the warrant. And um, one of the issues I, I put forth to him is to give us a reminder of the do's and don'ts of ballot question. I know there's been a whole series of uh, comments and questions around town on that. And for anyone that has a comment or a question, please send it to me and I'll forward it to Ray. Um, I, have, I have forwarded some questions to him in the past. Um, my general statement on, um, on this issue will be uh, the free, free speech is a powerful tool. Mm -hmm. um, most people will enjoy unlimited free speech regardless of what ballot questions are on or off. That's, that should be everyone's default understanding. Um, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Okay. We're a little behind the curve here tonight at 7.15 where we're going to start the talking about the RMHS boiler where we pick that topic up right now. Gail, you're here tonight and yes. it's Joe? And Joe. Okay. And John, too. So you're going to learn about boilers tonight, Gail? I'm all over the side. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no boilers. Great There's another great document when, there. Oh, right perfect. Next to it. Great when finance people talk about boilers. <laughs> So uh, this is a uh, this will keep tonight's uh, good evening good evening this will keep most of tonight's in rapt attention about heating and cooling so <laughs> why don't you take us through the uh, topic of the MSBA statement of intent I will start it very quickly and then um, turn it over to Joe so just to let folks know Do you want to go to full screen up there lower right corner up, up, right there. Thank you. So we presented this on February 5th to the school committee as well in order to obtain their pro approval in order to move forward with right. the statement of interest. Um, do you want me to go? Do you want me to go? Sure. So what we are here tonight is to 
obtain um, the Board of Selectmen's approval. So as part of the currently proposed FY19 capital plan, we do have funding in there to replace boiler number two at the high school. <coughs> so we are looking for approval to move forward through the MSBA's accelerated repair program to submit a statement of interest with them to determine whether or not we would be invited into their program, in which case we might be eligible to receive approximately 50% reimbursement um, for the cost of the boiler. So this would be, so there are two different parts that you can participate in. The accelerated repair program is for smaller items versus um, their other program, which you would do if you were going for a school replacement. So as part of this, there is an application that's comprised of two main parts. One is an educational impact in history. That what they are looking to do is make sure that what you're attempting to do is not to put repairs into a building, in which case you're in a couple of years going to be tearing down right. or doing major renovations right. for. The other one is facility background in history, which goes through your maintenance program, information on the town, the capital program, a lot of what we do. So Joe Huggins and I each completed our parts, reviewed it with John and then school committee. And really what they're looking for is to make sure again that this isn't part of a larger renovation plan. The requirements are that the value of the project needs to exceed $250,000. Currently the boiler replacement is estimated to be at 585000 and that's what it's currently in the capital plan for next year. So we do meet that hurdle. The other requirement is that the system being replaced must be a minimum of 20 years old. The boiler is exactly 20 years old. So we, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, Jill, this was a little bit before my time. Right. The, this replacement, this boiler was not replaced as part of the high school we did renovation. Put, we did put a new boiler in. One, right. not number two. Not, not Boiler number, boiler number two was dragged out of the old building and when they value engineered it out. <coughs> and what they decided to do was convert it from uh, an oil-fired steam, steam boiler to hydronic. To hydronic. <coughs> and at the time, Reading did not have a water treatment program, so when that boiler was pulled into the new building, it was already it sustained some damage to it. So, um, and over the last few years, we've been progressively spending more and more money on this particular unit which is why we targeted it for replacement. I thought your application was very well done. I went through it. It's okay. self-explanatory, but very clear. And one of the other requirements is that the funding for the project must be allocated and approved. So since this is part of the FY19 plan, we also meet that hurdle. And the intent is that if we do not get invited into the program that we would continue with the project. And if we are invited into the plan, when would the reimbursement most likely? I understand it's not known with certainty. It is not known with certainty. Our understanding right now is that the application process closes on Friday. It takes them about eight to 12 weeks to go through the yep. applications, come out and do site processes. What they have told us is it would be next year at this time that they would be looking to do the projects and then we would get reimbursed. Sometime so after that. so is there any that. danger of waiting that year, or would, no. would you want to proceed with it and then we just get reimbursed? You actually can, sorry, right. you can't proceed with it ahead of time, so we're not able to do About the replacement and then get reimbursed. You do always have the option, I don't right. want to jinx anyone, so knock on wood. If something were to happen and we needed to proceed, we would just pull ourselves from the program, the program and just proceed and just on do our, our own. own. Okay. But I mean, there's no, right, so the no, it has another year. There is no right. we have risk a, in waiting. We've already started something. with a full design, which is going to be done next week on the, on the boiler, right. and that will be ready to go when the capital becomes available in July. We'll know by then if we are invited into okay. the program. And Bob, if this hits in, say, FY20, the reimbursement would be, um, would just displace more funding in the capital plan, I assume, or does it go back in the general fund? It would go back in the general fund if it came in later, like another fiscal year. Okay. And what percentage do they reimburse? It's 50. About f approximately 50%. Yeah. It, it's it each town, it's town by town, like and part of... Yeah. We're around 48 to 50%. Tell us. So we're, we're hopeful what they have said. So the application is due this Friday. So if we obtain permission this evening, we have everything in place. We will obtain all of the signatures and make sure they have 
everything that they need we actually just covered these so we can go through that and then um, once part of the funding so this they get a certain amount of funding each year so the number of communities they invite in depend upon the number of applications so we do know that if the amount of applications exceeds the funding they can alter the requirements and say we're going to look at only replacements over 25 years or 30 Got years it. so it's really dependent upon Got it. And you don't know that before you do that? We don't. No. We don't know that. We do know last year or the year before they actually did increase the year of the boilers to 30 years because they had more than, more than right. one. And each community is only allowed to do one statement of interest per community. So this is the one that we're moving forward with. We feel it's a solid <coughs> application, but again, yeah. it'll depend on funding. Right. The only question I had is you're replacing this with three condensing boilers, so that right. gives you an opportunity to proportionalize the boiler running during warm, cooler weather, but not cold weather. Right, the condensing, condensing boilers will run more efficiently in the cooler weather, and they'll also modulate better than the larger Cleaver Brooks that's in there right so now. So you'll get some fuel savings out we of it. We will. We'll get less energy going out the stack and more into the building. And so do you have do you have a stack, or is it just PVC out the side um, of the wall? Right, the way it is going to work right now is the existing boiler is going to have its own venting along with the hot water boiler we have okay. in there. Also and uh, the design calls for it to be uh, exhausted out the front of the building near the generator, and then to go up the roof line with uh, okay. 10 inch steel double wall pipe to the okay. roof line. What's the expected the life of these three? Oh, it'll be 25 to 30 years at least. Okay. And we have a water treatment program in place, so that really extends the life of the boilers tremendously. Okay. Excellent. And so whenever the work gets done, it'll probably be done when school's not in session, so you it, can it's work around it? Or yeah, I mean, the, the work is anticipated to take around six to seven weeks total um, demolition and installation of the new boilers, and then the commissioning process would happen after that. Um, if we don't get invited in and we award a contract in July, we would probably start this in September or October. So you can do it while school's in session? Yeah, we can. Yeah. We're going to have to make it. It would be, yeah, well, it would be staged in a way that we'd be least disruptive to the school yeah. department. That's not get it cool. done. Give right, exactly. Get it in before the heating season. Given that number two is a steam boiler, is this it was It was a steam boiler. Is it abated already? Oh, yes. Yeah, there's no asbestos in the high school at all. All right, great. Yeah. I, I have no other questions. Mm -hmm. If not, I'll entertain nope. a motion. Very clear. Feel, feel free to waive my reading of this at any point. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I think you have to start. Okay. That I think you have to this start. is the approval of the MSBA statement of interest. Move that the Board of Selectmen authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated February 2nd, 2018, for the Reading Memorial High School located at 62 Oakland Road, Reading, Massachusetts, which describes and explains the following deficiencies. Mr. Berman to moves the, uh, to waive the reading of the rest of the article any objection none. seeing none okay no. um, any discussion on the motion you need a second I'm sorry second. Wait a second any discussion on the motion seeing none all those in favor Thanks, or zero Chris. thank, thank, you. You, thank you thank you right. very well done good luck thank you very much great great uh, application all right um, keep you posted yes thank you the next topic is the uh, adoption of the Reading housing production plan a revision of the housing production plan Gene back up? Yes. yes. Sure. Do you want the small one slide change that you suggested or because they know uh, Oh housing production oh, that works. Yes. That's what yeah. last one. I think if I might, Mr. Chair, yes. earlier I explained to the board via email the couple of changes that had happened since you last saw the housing production plan. Um, it was just wording and then there was an update from the consultant. So, uh, you know, I don't think there's any significant change, certainly, from when you last saw it. And we didn't receive any comments or questions from the board members since. Do you have any now is the time to ask? Uh, the only comments I have, I read this over the weekend. Um, to the degree that there are projects that are projected and not yet um, cemented down, and we heard earlier from Eaton Lakeview residents, um, 40 yard 467 Main Street might be another. 
that the chart on page 643, as well as the references that might appear elsewhere in the document on pages. Uh, one moment here, not cooperating. There's a reference on 43 and another reference on 29. For example, at Eaton, I didn't. I can go back and look at the one for uh, 467. But maybe mark those as either forecast or estimated to the extent that um, they are at this point in, dis in active discussion. Does that make sense? So you'd put an F or estimated in the headers, for example, or you could put it in the entries. Does that make sense? The table is projected, right? Yeah, it, yeah the, the narrative above says the table below projects the town of Reading. Um, and I believe this is the template that the state formats it. Yeah. Okay, then is the sentence above it eligible for reformatting where you could say the table below? Um, um, is there another word besides projects? It didn't immediately jump off the page to me. Estimates? Forecast? Anticipates. Anticipates? That's kind of lawyer speak. Um, yeah. I mean, none of these projects really are guaranteed. I mean, they're all sort of speculative. Well, yeah, and I think to, you know, obviously there's a high sensitivity. It's like, we're here. This is a big project. And you, so it's a, you know, and, it, and the neighborhood, because it's a 40B, has a clear recognition that, you know, They'd like to work with the project rather than against the project because it's going to come. But you know, to to their to the point they raised earlier, I think that's at least that's what I'm hearing John say is that we if we can't it, it does say project, so it doesn't say that it's in concrete. I get that. Um, it's just looking to. Well, there's another way to do it too. At the end of that sentence, you've already said note that the denominator will be updated. You might say note that the numerator will be updated uh, when the projects are finalized. So it's consistent with there being some sense of future change potentially. Does that make sense? Or is that even possible? The table below projects the town of Reading SHI. Note that the numerator of year-round projects will be updated after projects are finalized. And, and projects from whatever, FY21 are, are, est are, are estimated. And then note that the, the denominator will be updated by the census, blah, blah, blah. So, is that possible? FY20, right? Uh, wherever it cuts in, wherever the ambiguity is. FY20, well, FY21, yeah. actually. I, I don't technically know when that's going to be. We're dependent on the federal government to do the census mm -hmm. work. I'm not touching the census thought at all. I'm adding a new thought additional to it that says, in addition to the not denominator refresh, there's a numerator refresh that will be based on the actual projects when they're done and that some projects below are estimated. So we're not touching the census language at all. We're just adding a new clause. Bob? I, th I, think, I think it's clear, but just to state it, the three lines at the top of this chart are not included in any count yet. Correct. I'm, what this I'm, is just telling you that. Yeah. In addition, the numbers there may not necessarily be what they end up being, right? I think that would be the logical conclusion, absolutely. Right. I so, don't know how you could not draw that conclusion, but... Um, if there's no objection, I guess I'd, I'd put a reference after the first period and say, note that the numerator, uh, note that the projects in the first three lines are... Why don't you just not, why don't you just, why don't you just not name them? Because note that Johnson was... State wants, hmm? state wants them. State wants I'm sure the state wants to see that. The project on the first three lines will be added to the numerator. Are are are, are forecasted if and when built. If and when built. <coughs> Would you say are forecast? Are forecasted. Right. The reason is this is called a plan, and people right. may view, view this as the plan of record rather than it's a forecast of a plan. Right. That's all I'm trying to. Well, is that going to is that going to somehow disqualify well, this plan, Gene? So. Does that put us at is that is that hard harder to do than it sounds? Does, no. it, does it put us at I'm risk? I'm not sure I have your language. That's my only. I'm not fussy at the language. It's more <laughs> that, they're, that they're that they're that they're forecast. That they're forecast. First three projects. Projections is doing the job. Okay. So you know, you would like it to read that note that the projects in the first three line are forecasted. The, 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 the unit counts of the projects in the first three line are forecasted. 
That would that would be in, that would be enough. Our forecasts. Okay. Just so you know, those are the unit counts that the state has seen and approved. Right. Doesn't mean they'll be built. Doesn't mean it won't change. We all know that's that. That's why. Yes, I understand. Well, maybe uh, the Sunoco got approved last night, so but may not get built. Okay. But we apply for the subsidized housing inventory. We apply for that to be added to the subsidized housing inventory right. when we after we approve it under 40R. So. This is all clear to everyone except the public. That's the problem. <laughs> it's all clear to everyone yeah. inside. The outside has no idea what this means. I'm okay, to make so it a little okay. we're going to rewrite this to say, note that the unit counts on projects on the first three lines are forecasts. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, that's That'll fine. Work. That'll work fine. That was, that was my only comment. I thought the rest of it was clear. Okay. And it was well done. I thought yes. it was very well done. I, I totally agree. <coughs> Excellent. Uh, any other comments? If not, I'll call for a motion. Well, actually, just, just one other okay. really quick comment, Mr. Chair. I, I think that it's unfortunate maybe that maybe the only five of our people in this room really have kind of taken a look at this housing production plan because the fact that we actually did one and of high quality is what actually garnered us the ability to even have to be talking about a safe harbor. So it, it shows that the town and the staff this board take affordable housing incredibly seriously. And we're and, and the fact that this is done the way it is um, has given us a tool to basically maybe shape some projects that um, other folks might want to do that we might not think are so great. So before we just vote on it and send it on its way for the next five years, I just really want to compliment Gene and Julie, Bob, Absolutely. the rest of the staff yep. on this. This is something that we can really be proud of. The fact that there's only maybe 10, 12, not even that many towns that even have a safe harbor is really a testament to, to the commitment of the town to really um, you know, do affordable housing in a way that makes sense. So I just didn't want to let that go past. Uh, thank you, Barry. I should, have, I should have thought to do that myself. I can't tell you how much time the staff put in this, and they really deserve that they're unsung heroes to get this done. Your second point is also true. My daughter lives in Winchester. They're in the process of putting a 600 unit 40B wow. in an area of the town to try to get current in one uh, effort. And I said to her, have you gone to the ZBA and asked for the housing production plan? And they said, yeah, they don't have one. Or, that, is, that is their housing production plan, it's, 600 units. Yeah, the plan is just get, get current. So it, 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 Barry's exactly right. This is a body of work which seems like it's bureaucracy at work, but it actually is makes us eligible to be able to compete for a safe harbor status, which is which is the only reason, or one of the only reasons we have it. And not every town puts this time and energy in, and this is, although it's a formulaic report, it's important stuff, and it spells, it makes us qualify. So I, again, I, kudos to the staff for getting this done. Any other comments from the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chairman, move that the Board of Selectmen approve the housing production plan as presented. Second. Right. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 4 0. Thank you, Gene. Thank nice you for staying up. Okay. The next topic is the 40R projects, the permits revolving fund. Where did it go? So, some of the data in this table changed last night. I haven't had a chance to update it. I could just give you a minute of a background because I learned a lot actually a few years ago um, when I went through some reading history, even while I was here, I must have missed it. <coughs> the, the inspections revolving fund um, through act, through vote of town meeting, can add projects at any time. Um, they can be 40B, they can be 40R, they can be neither. Um, and that's a discussion we just wanted to open with you tonight because <coughs> next meeting you're going to close the warrant. We want to know if there should be a, a, such an article, one's drafted in your uh, warrant. The reason the timing is important is because at least one of these projects on the list will begin clearly before next November, at least we hope so. Right. Certainly the intention is there. Um, it's a philosophical discussion. Um, I think my point to you in, in my, um, my overview was I think it's appropriate to put the article on and then table it, vote up, vote it up or down as town meeting wishes, but it's a discussion that's important to have because it's your only opportunity to have it. Right. Uh, once uh, one or more of these projects begin, 
Um, this is this is this is updated. This is new today. No, but I mean, in our packet. I'm just to this is new today. So. Oh, okay. we just Sorry. updated okay. it after last night. Sorry. Yeah. So that's the background of why Jean is kind of giving you a quick overview. So what's the decision point? Um, there isn't a decision tonight. It's just background for a discussion at the next meeting on closing the warrant. For closing the warrant oh, to warrant right, article. What, in the current balance of that revolving fund as we sit here today? Oh, where's Sharon? I don't remember. She uh, She walked out. <laughs> Ballpark? 400-ish thousand. Okay. Ballpark. But I guess the question is how, how, how much, how much uh, are we going to need to actually permit these projects and inspect these projects? I mean, it, yeah, and just to take a sidebar, uh, Jean's expense because she has to sit here and listen. Um, we still don't know what kind of infrastructure improvements we need to make in the downtown. Um, I've put forward a budget that asks for some money to figure that out right. with the consultant, but we don't know the results. I put a, you know, a, a hold on the four, the three enterprise funds and the general fund for what it would cost. But this could certainly be a very reasonable source of some of the funds. Just to be clear. So you wouldn't exhaust. You don't think you'll exhaust that 400 some? With there's no way. The only in the way we're using it now is um, there's 190 thousand in the current year, um, which I will tell you we will reduce at town meeting for economic development and other expenses. Right. The department has. Right. Um, you know, in theory there was three years worth of an economic development director. In theory now there's two years. Um, since there's a vacancy, we'll be able to reduce some of that usage. Are we? Not going to, we're considering, re, you know, filling the vacancy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But there's been some period of time where it's vacant, so there's some right. amount of offset that we don't need. A little bit of play that, right. uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Sure. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Gene. Thank you. Okay, we're 20 minutes behind. We're catching up. Um, change of beneficial interest, uh, liquor junction. Yeah. I've been getting texts from the police department. They're tied up with something. Christine will be here as She's soon as here. she can. Oh, Christine's here. How do you like that? Okay. Um, the be Perfect. I should look around first. Um, the beneficial interest and the uh, the next one were straightforward. I included the police background information. So for those um, watching at home, I'm sorry. I'm not aware that anyone's here for that, but if they are, they certainly will yeah. speak up. It's all straightforward. Okay. I'm here for Vancouver School of Fire Pizza. Okay. okay, come on up. Welcome up. Yep. <coughs> so we'll take these. Um, you can do that one first. Yeah, we'll do Anthony's Coal Fire sure. Pizza. For those watching at home, this is a formulaic change. Anytime there's a change of manager or change in ownership, there's a uh, filing which the town gets a copy of and uh, uh, notes the, the uh, change. I went through these over the weekend. Uh, we see a lot of these. these um, police weigh in background checks whatsoever. Um, I didn't yeah. see anything out of ordinary. No. And everything's been approved by the uh, police. Right. Yes. Any, any other questions by the board? No. Okay. Mr. Yes. Did the board of selectmen approved the... Sorry. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had your uh, pizza at the uh, Wood End PTO. You donated that, so oh, yes. thank you. That was, last that was good. Brought nice. people in. But yeah, the goal is, I, I'm from Brown, I'm from Brown. I live on Main Street, so I, yeah. a couple of my kids go to Wood So actually next, uh, next month, the entire the entire month on Thursdays for the PTO. Oh, great. You guys come in, anybody that comes in, 20% gets donated back to the PTO. The entire That's great. Lunch. I'm trying to get back to the, to the community as much as we can. So we thank really you so much for doing that. that. Very much so. Um, thank you. For the record, would you mind just saying your name and your sure, address? My name is Carlos Alberto. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve the change of manager for annual all alcoholic beverages restaurant license for Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza of Reading LLC, 48 Walkersburg Drive, Reading, Massachusetts. Mr. Berman seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Cool. The manager need not be named in the motion, I take it? Correct. Okay. No question. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 4-0. Okay. Thank Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Have a good evening. Buffalo chicken pizza is really good. Should I? <laughs> Go ahead. Please. Please. Discuss. Please. Uh, uh, regarding uh, Liquor Junction, would the Board of Selectmen approve the change of beneficial interest for an annual all alcoholic retail <coughs> beverage license for Cajal and Kevin LLC doing business as Liquor Junction, one general way, Reading, Massachusetts? 
Okay, that's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 4 0. All right. Thank you, Christine. Good evening. Right on time. How do you do it? <laughs> we have a few um, safety items. The first one um, that the Parking Traffic Transportation Task Force met on is um, we have been looking, we've gotten a few complaints about Main Street at uh, Green Street. Can you throw up a map just for those? Yes, that's right. Just open up another window. I sent a few pictures, I don't know. Oh. Or I have it. Oh, there might be an email. Or do you just want to do the map? We can do that. Yeah, if you have pictures, those are always good. Just take it over there. I'll try to find it. And you have volume. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Perfect. Go full screen now. There you go. Okay, so the problem with uh, Main Street and Green Street is really the sight lines, where the stop sign is, um, and we've had uh, this is the crash data for the past five years. We've had nine crashes there, um, which is a little bit high for a side road street coming onto a main road. Um, it's pretty high compared to some of the others in the area. So we were taking a look at that and coming up with the ideas of how to make it safer. Uh, every single crash involved there was taking a left-hand turn or going straight across. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, myself and Officer Scout and Go, and this is what the driver sees when they're trying to take yep. a left-hand turn because of the parking and the, just the way the setup oh, of the cool sidewalk obscured. is. They can't see. So we were proposed um, the best, safest route would be to make it a right turn only at that uh, intersection. Okay. So, Christine, can I yeah. just ask a quick question? So, um, to the left of that is where basically the, uh, it's the Sunoco station where yeah. the new development which just got approved. Is there anything that's going to go in, in, oh, it's Julie, no, those, they, they're gone. In, in anything in that proposal that is going to either change the way people come in and out that sort of you know, kind of make you rethink this down the road when there's a building there, or not is it part of the, is it part of the traffic study in the project? I don't remember reading. Not, it. not formally. Um, one would suppose more traffic coming out of Green Street just makes the situation worse. Difficult. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, because we're going to do something, and based on what it is now, but there's going to be 31 units in retail right to the yep. left that might rethink it down the road. I just mm -hmm. didn't know if that had been. You know, yeah. Kind of into the mix. Seems like it would add to the problem you're yeah, already right. describing, right. Christine. Right. Um, so this proposal would add a right turn only sign, which would be, if left alone, just 24 hours. All. Yes, this would be 24 hours. Without restrictions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's several options. If you make a right hand turn only and you really want to be in the other direction, there are a couple of ways to redirect yourself. Yeah, back yes, and left on light, Ash. Right. Yeah. yeah, there's a light uh, literally right and there. And this one is now starting to become a really used side road for cut through, so that would right. help yep. too. Would you put in addition to the arrow the no, you know, you the, do the no left turn with the no, with a line through it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, Okay, what are, you, what are we looking for tonight? A, a motion? This is just an uh, advisory. Update, okay, yeah. thank you. And then the second topic uh, says. And then the other one, this came in, this was a request from the Killam School, um, Sarah Levesque, the principal, as well as the PTO. They are proposing, they use uh, in front of the Killam, this is their drop off area. So basically, cars line up, you can see all the way up Charles Street. Yep. I'm mm -hmm. sure everyone knows they yep. go all the way past Wakefield. Um, <coughs> So what's causing a major backup, Sarah said, is that people are waiting to take a left out of uh, Killam School. So we they propose we would propose just a no a right turn only, no left turn from 7:30 a.m. to 8:30 a.m. What, what, what about the afternoon pickup? Is the <laughs> they don't problem? allow them to go in there in the afternoon. Um, they only allow morning drop off. Got it. So it's kind of a, it stems with the rest of the schools that all do have a one-way flow traffic for their drop off in the morning. Oh, that's what that is, because in, in our package, the page that doesn't have a name of the address, I thought it was inheriting it from the, if you look at our package. Oh, yeah. so the amendment we would need to make, um, you would need a traffic article that would cover the 7.30 to 8.30 only, no yeah. right turn, because we don't have one already. Okay. So then the third article no left is the turn, one that covers. Right? What is that? No left turn. No left turn, sorry, yeah. yes, right turn only. Yep, right. From 7.30 to 8.30. Okay. 
I'm sorry, there are three articles in our packet. One is the one for Green Street, which we talked about. There's a second one which has no no, no street, no location. It just says right turn only from yeah, 730 to 830. So that's to enact the article from the, so we could um, enforce the 730 to 830 only. So we would add that. Oh, so you're limiting it to one hour. For this that one. school, yes, that's all they've requested. We've got some other signs, like off Salem Street, there's hours when you can. And oh, so this applies to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. It, it, it didn't, it didn't okay, have a, sorry. A title on it. Because it, it's going to be, uh, you could use it in the future for any. That would make street. sense. Okay. No, never mind. Oh, they okay. okay. So you only want it for the duration of, yes. of drop-offs. You don't want it for the balance of the day, or you don't want to change traffic. No, pattern. they said it all opens up after 8:30 in the morning. Okay. After 8:30, it's clear on both sight lines. It's just the morning drop-off. It's causing traffic safety issues so on you guys, Street. Okay. I have no objection. This is all. This is part and parcel of a growing town with changing traffic patterns, and we see pinch points and we find a way to address them. Yep. Um, I think this is perfectly fine. Um, it's expected what we do. Thank you so much for your time Thank and effort. So, so I'm sorry, like is there a question? Uh, Tony Durazzo, 130 John Street. Yes. Uh, specifically referring to the Main Street and Green Street intersection. Uh, before making any changes, I would respectfully request the board look at what the impacts will be on, say, Washington Street. Elliott and Washington, which would be the alternates for getting across town from Green Street. Now we need a map. Especially with the addition of the 467 Main Street, uh, 40R project, and the potential 120 units at the end of Lakeview. I'm sorry, T Tony, what streets were you talking about? Main and Green. Right. If you can't take a left out of Main and Green, you'll have to go down Elliott over to Washington. That is correct. Or you make a right turn and make your turn around at the light, which is literally half a block out of the way. It's just that <coughs> there can be unintended consequences yeah. of change. Always can be, of course, but you know, I mean, there is a, there is a, uh, I mean, and I, there's nothing wrong with looking at all, but what you're proposing for all of the places that you've brought up is a major traffic study, which is not going to come cheap. But, it, but after a while, I think the traffic pattern corrects itself, and Elliott and Washington Street get loaded. And they're already pretty heavily loaded, but that signalized intersection, it's, it's uh, wider than Green Street. Yeah. So uh, we would like people to use Washington Street, not Green Street, that's what I think, because of the intersection. It's safer to turn that way. Yeah. On Washington Street, does back up significantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that turn. It's not fun. No, Actually, with so. that in mind, is the is the signalization at Washington and Maine uh, the state, or is it red? No, that's it. So, would we ever to that point that there might be changes in timing or changes in duration? <coughs> we that, would that be part of a later assessment? Uh, we can have Ryan. Yeah, I was going to say the engineers can look at that any time. Because particularly because of the Sunoco station development, the changes yeah. in this, I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be some visible impact. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. That's a good input. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I yeah. noticed there, there's signature lines for the Board of Selectmen. Do we need to take a vote on these? Uh, I wasn't sure if you wanted to tonight. This was really okay. meant for your information. Oh, if you had any questions and, had, well. and to do any further research. Good catch, Dan. No, I think this is fine for tonight. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's all we need for tonight, then. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. in. Thanks, Thanks Thank you. Keep up the good work. <laughs> All right, next uh, at the 845, I'm now 15 minutes ahead, we'll start um, previewing the warrant for April Town Meeting. So I've made up an hour delay. I'll slow you down. <coughs> Um, I still need to get with uh, Town Council in terms of the order of the articles, so I'm just really going to discuss the meat of the articles. The first three articles are uh, as the Charter would have us prefer to do. Um, I have a suggestion here that the State of the Town and the Finance Committee <coughs> report be deferred to the night the budget is done. We're going to discuss that further. Right. Um, and then the traditional articles not, not mandated by the Charter are to change the current year's capital program. We have very few changes to amend the current year's budget. Um, one of the challenges, the Finance Committee is going to vote on March 7th on all these uh, articles. Um, so and we are not going to have a final number on snow and ice by any means on March 7th. They're usually voting the last week of March when it's much more certain. How are we on that, by the way? Um, um, under budget. Now that you've asked, we'll jinx it, but I think there's 100 or 150 yeah. grand surplus still, so we're fine. Okay. Well, yeah. um, but actually, I'm going to FinCom uh, Thursday and asking for deficit spending permission because I won't see FinCom again until right. town meeting. Yeah, that's fine. 
um, and there's not a lot of changes in the budget. Um, this couple savings, public safety's had some overtime. I, I don't recall, I don't think there's a prior year's bill. Um, I don't remember that Sharon had one, maybe. So that may be tabled. Um, there will be surplus materials declared. Um, Article 8, last year, uh, town meeting changed the trust setup, but the process annually is still the same. Uh, we set aside funds in the general fund and the three enterprise <coughs> funds to put into OPEB. Um, we purposely don't put them in at the beginning of the fiscal year in case we need them as a hedge against health insurance premiums. We did not need that this year. So those full funding are available and town meeting will be asked to put them in the irre irrevocable trust. The library has requested uh, some changes to a uh, library materials replacement of revolving fund, just expanding the definition. It's not a large fund. Um, their uses are, I'm sorry, their language just again proposes an expansion of some of the terms. Quick go back, Bob, on eight. When, we wouldn't know the OPEB contribution until. Well, we know what's what's been budgeted for. Um, we could do more or less, but I would suppose the default recommendation would be the amounts budgeted for. Which is what, five? It's either 500 or 550 in the general fund. I don't remember. All right. And then uh, the enterprise funds are all on a 20 year schedule. Um, as Gene just presented, this would be the time for you to amend the inspections revolving fund if, if you so choose. Um, I do have draft language for most of these articles if you want to see it. Um, Article 11 would be the more traditional approving of revolving funds. Um, recall that s state uh, regulations changed two years ago and, and now it's more difficult for us to do this. You know, their idea was to make it simpler. Um, we still need this article every year though. The affordable housing trust fund planned, you know, perhaps one day the board will revisit this with the um, housing authority and their board. Uh, Reading is still doing it differently than almost everyone and differently than the state model. <coughs> Different isn't always a bad thing. Uh, but I think from time to time the board should always revisit this. Uh, this will renew the way Reading does it. The schools have um, discussed and I don't know yet whether they're going to continue with this request to um, allow for buying digital curriculum longer than three years. As you can imagine, since three years is state law in Massachusetts, the price point past three years is much more affordable. So if you get permission from town meeting to, um, to buy digital <coughs> curriculum from longer than three years, you get a much better You're deal. buying access, you're not buying the data. Right? Um, this is correct. like software as a service. Correct. Okay. Um, the schools are concerned whether um, approval, uh, again it's a bylaw, whether approval by town meeting and then by the Attorney General would actually be timely enough for this summer. It probably will not be, quite frankly. Um, so whether they choose to go forward with it now or defer it to November is, is up to them. Okay. Um, Board of Selectmen, there was an instructional motion at, uh, I believe it was November town meeting to rename the board. Uh, there will be uh, ample time to discuss that in two weeks. Um, I will say that um, after discussion with many of my peers and town council discussed with some of his, his peers, um, we'll, we'll give you a list of all the different options and the pluses and minuses of each. Okay. The, most, we, the yeah. most common name that has been sort of discussed is select board. Um, and that may be a fine choice, but I, I will tell you there are some issues in some communities that went that way because what do you call a member? There's one community that has select men and select women, and one of the women wanted to be called a selectman. So if you really want to get away from gender entirely, that may not do it. Um, what town council's uh, advice, and, and I agree, as a starting point is executive board because that's your role in the charter. That you describes are the executive your function. Board. Right. That describes your function. Right. And we'd and be then, a member. And then everyone would be an executive board member. There'd be a chair and a vice chair and a secretary, but that totally takes out the yeah. gender if that's that, the objective. It kind of sounds member. like something you buy at Home Depot, a select board. I mean, I well, never understand. I have that. to say, personally, I find the term select board is somewhat elitist. We're yeah. the select board. We could look at that way. And Wakefield um, actually changed to town council. With a CIL, well, that's so confusing. C O U N C I L. That's the wrong spot. And then we have, and well, then we have our because town there's council. a city council, and so oh. they are a town council, and they have a town council with an S E L. You can imagine it's very confusing so when they get together. Confusing, and and as, not to steal Ray's humor from next uh, meeting, but 
Uh, he didn't wish to be called a solicitor. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> maybe, maybe a, a sidebar here. What are board, uh, boards of aldermen doing about this? Do you have any idea? That's a good question. You know, I haven't I, heard. I don't it. see an easy one there. An alder board. No, that's, that's really. Kind of I've not the heard of an alder board. board. Usually, those are in city, so they might just go to city council. Yeah, city council. Maybe. Because yeah. aldermen. Yeah. What's Melrose? Aldermen. They're aldermen. Yeah, yeah. and they're and they're cities, really so they can probably go to Chicago. city council. Chicago. Really. Mm -hmm. So, Bob, just on the process on this, I mean, yeah. wasn't, didn't the instructional motion sort of uh, uh, have um, that the bylaw committee or, and would, would sort of hold it, hearings on this? Had, I don't have it with me, but it had, they done it had two or? parts. One was to specifically bring an article that would change the name of the Board of Selectmen, period. And the other was to some, discuss some process for making other gender neutral changes right, to all of a our piece to bylaws, that, right? you know, et cetera. Um, quite candidly, uh, Matt Cronellis has tried for 10 weeks to get the bylaw committee to meet and they won't. I don't know how to explain it any simpler than that. Yep. So we had to take this proverbial bull by the horns and come up with a proposal because that's what town meeting expects. Right. So we've actually like a placeholder. Yes. Yeah. What do you think the cost of doing this, Bob, is? Do we well, even know? this cost is, is nothing, is, is minor. And we're avoiding the need to, to bring this to a charter amendment, at least at well, this point. We can wait until this, the charter yes. is amended. This would uh, do the job that I believe town meeting asked for. Right. Uh, that's up to them to decide. Um, but to fully change um, all gender neutrality in all documents, yeah. or to go further than this um, and change the selectmen uh, in the charter would be a much more involved and costly process. What would you and guess will, that, that would be? This, I've talked to Ray. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't. So basically, the, the town meeting can, can approve the changing of the name, and then next time we have a charter commission, right. um, yeah. whether how long that is, we right. could just get uh, codified there, but it still can be voted by town meeting and, and be enacted. Yeah, and I, and I want to make sure you understand that <clears throat> state law calls it the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, any movement there to change no. the name? No. Not that I've heard. So, th so that no matter what we do locally, you must always have the powers of the Board of Selectmen as defined in yeah. state law. Also known as Board of Selectmen. So it has to always have a reference. Right. Right. Um, so you, you can do a certain amount locally, but you don't want to cut that tie. So those towns that changed their name to Select Board, how do they handle that issue? Um, they one just town just decided at a meeting like this just to do it. We're going to call ourselves this. Any objections? None known. Right. That's what we call ourselves. No, but I mean in terms of like when they have to deal with the state, they they, they then use the more formal. Normal board of select. I no. mean, they just do it and and. But you're in uncharted territory because yeah. it doesn't follow and state law. It wasn't a bylaw. It was just a, yeah. a not even a vote of the selectmen. It was just an indication of yeah, that's a good title. Oh, they'll, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll <laughs> reduce our local aid. Oh well, yeah, they already did that. <laughs> so it's safe to say that Ray's going to discuss this yeah. with us yeah. in okay. two weeks. Just keep yeah. going. Let's move. Uh, okay. Uh, Article nine. Why is that being sponsored by us rather than CPDC? Should it be CPDC? Revolving fund, or I'm sorry, no, the, I have a different number. Number. So no, the one on the screen is different yeah. from the one in your book. You got to look at the screen. Yeah, which one, Dan? Article nine. What's it? It's not the article the nine. It's a zoning one. Oh, what's all right. The what's the, the zone, title? What's the zoning one? Oh, that's coming up. Oh, that's yeah, why I thought you skipped over it. No, no that's my own. That's thing a good here. point. Uh, it is CPDC. It should be CPDC. It should be CPDC. Yeah, good catch. Um, that's the next one. That's the uh, zoning bylaw change, uh, and then the last uh, two are the budget. First is accepting Chapter 90, and, and the second is the budget. Um, I did get an update from Ray uh, earlier today. Excuse me. He is going to be available in person for the first four nights of town meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically, he's only available for the first two nights, so that makes the planning a lot easier. Easier. Anybody think this is going more than two? I would have to be candid again with you that if an override fails, I think the budget's going to go on oh, for could. days. Yes, <laughs> it could. I, I think it could just get an enormous amount of discussion and, and mm -hmm. probably a warranted amount of discussion. Right. Um, so I do believe the budget should go last, mm -hmm. um, and we'll schedule it as best we can. Okay. Thank so you. That's all I have. All right. Thanks, Bob. Let's see. Oops. I remember CPDC. So the next thing goes. Yes. Did we get anything on that? Uh, Something was in your package. H. I'm missing H. Yeah, there's like a one page. Just a one page. Yeah. Was it sent separately? Um, As I don't I remember seeing it. It should have been over the weekend. No, no let's see. I don't think so. I don't it's think so. Right about into the warrant, and then can you throw it up on the screen? Yeah, I will. Um, no, yeah, you're right. Is it 
I don't know. Well, it's out of order. I think it might be toward the end. Yeah. It should be in there. If someone has a page number, let me know. Uh, I'm looking. <laughs> well, he just looked behind me. I'll just do it this way. Right. That's why I had to ask you earlier. I couldn't. You know. Oh, that's why you asked I think the there's, Yeah. I think I is at the end. I. That's oh, not I. I also, I was going to do this earlier, but I had a room full. Um, I do have some discussion about uh, the balanced budget and the override budget, just so the public can see. Okay. So the, it's not there. These sort of we'll the impact figures and, and the, 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 the things that made the cut and didn't make the cut. Oh, okay. Um, you want me to do that before the goals? I'm happy yeah. to. Oh, go ahead. Why don't I do that? So this is an important topic. I think this first time the public will have heard outside of an email or print. Um, the priorities for the town side, which are funded. Um, right. Remember, we started with a list of 30, and there were a couple of additions at, towards the end. So, so by count, for what that's worth, there were 30 requests, and 21 of them are will be funded um, as part of the override. Um, you'll see I added something new that was not listed as 30, yep. although it so sort of snuck in. Uh, there was police <coughs> overtime, but there wasn't fire. After reviewing their budget over the last week, um, they need more overtime. Quite, quite honestly. Um, so let and me. This is for this will be for 19. This is for FY 19. Let me go and this over is part of the override. Yep. Correct. Um, funding. Let if me should discuss it pass. particularly the issues. I, I took all your priorities up to a point, and then I differed, and I'll just describe the differences. I think the things we had in common are, are simple enough. This is your composite rank over in column yep. L. Yeah. Yep. Um, here's the things that didn't make it and the composite rank. It's a little easier to see it in this display. So effectively, these three items, one without a number, mm -hmm. got placed ahead of some of your choices, and I'll describe them. Um, technology equipment, quite simply, because it's easy to cut in the future year, and it gives right. us flexibility. Right. Um, a, a long discussion I had with DPW, uh, they had three uh, seasonal workers requested. Um, you and I had both ranked the highway one last. Um, they specifically asked me they would rather have this one than the other two for reasons they explained which made logical sense. So it's DPW seasonal, it's just different, and then there's this fire number. Yep. Bob, can you, can you explain, um, I think I understand, but I think uh, just in looking at this, I know people have a, a, a big question on this. So part of the rationale for adding four additional firefighters was that they're thinly staffed, one goes down on vacation or injured, right. it creates a lot of overtime. So if we're hiring four, the rationale is that overtime should go down in theory. Correct. So why are we doing that and still adding 40,000 of overtime? Is that because it takes a while to ramp up? Is it because um, we're still going to need overtime? Okay, I think that's, that's going to be to be explained. I think y yes to all the points you made. Um, as you've heard from both, the, both chiefs, the hiring process is slow. So if um, the override is passed um, and we act as quickly as we can and we get uh, openings in the academies as quickly as we can, there is zero chance there's four fighters in July. The best we could probably hope for is two by December. So that won't fix the overtime problem for the first year. Um, generally speaking, uh, and I haven't had this discussion with the chiefs, I personally don't expect more than two or three at a time because you need to have a slot in the academy. There's no way we're going to get four or five. Uh, from my experience, so that's that's the primary driver, okay. uh, and overtime is up again this year, uh, both in, in police and fire, <coughs> and you know again that provides us future flexibility if things go as as I think you and I would hope, and overtime pressures do come down. That's great. That's more funding for other uh, areas of the town. So okay. uh, the things Good that thing. did not make the cut that maybe would have otherwise again is the two DPW issues the engineering, and the cemetery, and actually parks. Um, there was a clerk, primarily for the town clerk's office, but to be shared in that uh, department. And those are the real ones that got bumped. The other things were ranked more lowly anyways. Um, just to hit the last topic, which I know has gotten some discussion out there, um, I'll explain what I did and why. Bob, is this the one? Did you, s you sent this to us? Yes. That's yeah. the The impact you know, on the average single family home, if you will. Yeah. Which you revise those numbers from. It's right here, $488. Yeah. Um, in the draft versions that we had discussed, we had projected what they might be next fall. 
and that math would suggest um, something over five hundred dollars but we don't know what the tax rate's going to be next fall at all and we felt the most accurate and honest assessment is if the override is passed and it was passed today and assessed today this is what it would cost people today and that's the delta only that does that not the delta only the statutory two so and a half. next year when the tax rate is set the existing tax base will go up by two and a half percent, right. and then this will be added on top. So this will the not rate go will up by another two and a half percent. Right. And if there's a rate differential, Correct. that could right. impact so 488. Right. Any statement other than this one is <coughs> an estimate. Right. Yeah. This is a fact. This is the only thing that you can actually Correct. pin right. your hat. You know, but a year from now, it. even that estimate and that fact will be different. It's I'm quite sure. Yeah. So it. it yeah, the average single family home will change. Right. So 488 does, won't be true in a year, but it's true today. Does residential appreciate in assessed value right. faster or slower than CIP? Most years faster, but we don't know. Right. Could so commercial yeah. property go up more than it did this year? I mean, right. there's a jillion things. Right. right. So this, um, and then, you know, 176 again is, is the town number. And um, I don't know that we need to discuss this tonight, but um, you will need to decide the wording of the ballot question, and Ray will be here to Could help you. Could you put that up? Uh, and there's been a big request uh, from the Yes for Reading and other people that that be posted clearly in a website somewhere. Well, at page four of the packet, essentially. Just to highlight, this is just my, um, yeah. after listening to you, this is my right. statement. So, so this Bob, may, uh, may so not uh, be we should, Ray hasn't seen oh, this. Or, oh, yeah, he's seen oh, this. And he's, Blessed, he, he said you don't have to be quite so detailed. Well, we want to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, we I mean, want to be, yeah. and we want to be clear. So he's okay with this language. There's nothing wrong sure. with it. Oh, but yeah, he just wanted to make sure we didn't knew we didn't have to be as, yeah. as detailed. Can we, can we approve it? Kind of while we're on that point, Bob, yeah. um, I actually got a couple of calls. Um, and I don't know if any of the rest of you did about a, a, a statement that was made about information dissemination on the website. Okay. Um, and I... And I think it was a general statement that actually made sense to me. I didn't actually think about it after I read it. Did you see that one, John? I think I caught wind of it. Yeah. yeah. So essentially what it said was you made a comment in your opening remarks that said um, we, some people thought we put out too much information. <laughs> And you know we need to. And you you were soliciting how it should be. You were soliciting yep. ideas, mm -hmm. and I thought it was right on point. Still do, but I got a couple of calls that said, well, "Are you going to leave something out now?" Um, and I, and I know that that's never your intention. I mean, uh, quite the opposite actually is that well, when somebody it's, wants it's to know to, something, it's, it's up to there. the public as to what it wants. But the public had told me prior to the last two weeks. You gave us way too much last time. You overwhelmed us. In terms of the in terms of the, in terms of the materials the, on the, the website, materials on the website yeah. it was too much. Yeah. Well, Everyone yeah. loved the one-page summary yeah. that Jane did. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the rest of it, it had listening session minutes, <coughs> and yeah. presentations, and they just. I guess what I'm it. saying is, when I was questioned about it, okay, it was, "What are you going to leave out?" I said, "No material facts will be left out. Correct. It's going to be simplified, direct." And you know, and that's kind of the way that I, okay. and I, and I, I just think it's important to say it out loud that, yeah. you know, like the, you know, what you've built so far, all yeah. material, all very direct, all very factual, yeah. um, but not burying people in the weeds so deep that you can't get the material facts out. I think FinCom's um, discussion last week um, was probably on point in terms of what most people want. Uh, give me a summary and let me click for more details yep. and then let me click for even more details and so on make me work for yep. it but make it easy for me to understand right yeah I, and i think that's the exactly yeah. Summary. I, yeah. Right. Um, yeah so we don't want to just say look here's a picasso right there's all kinds of things here or worse a van gogh right, right. I'm, I'm really just saying this yeah. So that if anybody else had shared that same okay, concern certainly. that somebody called me with, yeah, it's not they would know that it's not. Right. Yeah, the only, it's yeah. not give less factual information. It's you right. know yeah. the, the only uh, the only comments I got was, can we please take down the 2016 yeah, yeah. override that says big letters 7.5 million. So well, one of the, that's been done. One yet. of the principles that we set for ourselves upon 2016's uh, failure was to be clear to try to give folks the data, but also the rubric that made sense out of the data. And Bob is right, there's a high level summary which will satisfy some number of folks, but many of us want to dig down and say, well, how did you arrive at that number? And more importantly, what did you leave in and what did you leave out? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, to do that, you're into 
you're into a lot of data, all of which is available on the town website. That can be daunting to some to look at, but we erred on the side of the levels of abstraction. As far deep as you wanted to dive, it's all there, including all the video to discuss it and all the commentary from town staff to provide color and context. So um, I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah. Could have been done better. Anything can be done better. But. Okay. Any other comments? Um, there's the language uh, that I've drafted for question one. I'm happy to post it, but oh, it's I just my my language. Has Ray looked at this? Yeah. Okay. And so we can enumerate yes, the you individual. Can do it this way. Okay. Right. I'd like to make a motion to approve question one as worded on this slide. Second. Um, one question for me: Were there alternate constructions that Ray had considered? Uh, I considered uh, even more detail. Um, Mm. Splitting up public works, finance, technology, yeah. and human yeah. other services and inspections. No, but, but for example, you have four firefighters, right. uh, five police officers, but no other headcount is enumerated. Is there any but other headcount? That's got the overtime in it, right? Oh. Yes, yeah, it does. I'm just looking at heads. Yeah. You've got heads um, specified for those two, but for no other role. You would you would then have to be specific, like after public works, you'd have to say something in parentheses. Well, for example, that became a very un unwieldy. I get it. Yeah. Where's Gail in that number? Or not Gail. Uh, uh, Sharon. Uh, finance. Right. Just the word <coughs> finance. Okay. I think that I think most people understand that there are some underlying things to each one of those major headers, and that's yeah, right. plenty as it that's is. That's where I ended up. Yeah. I, I think the, the idea of enumerating here. police officers and firefighters, I, I actually think people appreciate understanding that. And you know, and it doesn't I agree. It doesn't complicate the the question. Yeah, except for the discussion that you've had. Um, I probably would have put public safety in a dollar figure, but I think you're right. Yeah. That spelling out exactly what you're getting is more I like important. that a lot. And the dispatcher is in there too? Mm -hmm. No dispatcher. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. left out. No. No dispatcher. I mean, there'll also be in the backup material, there'll be a sort of summary page of not just on the town. When you say stuff. backup material, what do you mean? Well, the stuff that might be not on the, the town. Ballot. Website, not, not to the ballot. Not to the ballot question, but on the, okay. on the town oh, website. Yeah, absolutely. It'll yeah. say, this sure. is the, and then this is the school, yeah. what they voted for. And this is a good example where we could put this exact language and then someone could click on a link and get more information. Yeah, that would point yeah. to the school. Right. Matter of fact, right. Bob, you know, using the ballot question, on the website as a yeah. as a link as a link out might oh, yeah. actually hyperlink, be. hyperlink the totals into yeah. yep. Yep. all right uh, yep. motion on the floor we have a second any other discussion yep. if not all those in favor Thanks. four zero very well thank you yep. um, I got a uh, quick text apparently there's a major accident at uh, South Street between South Street and uh, the Stoneham line oh, with a apparently uh, it's closed off for investigation, and 128 is closed off as well. So we kind of heard all the uh, yeah the yeah. scramble yeah. when yeah. we were okay. sitting. Christine there. ran out pretty quick too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. And that that will go at the top of the uh, warrant that we're going to close, Correct. right? Make yeah. Sure, make sure you do that. Um, Article I, I'm going to propose we defer till uh, mm -hmm. when we're all back together again. I think there's uh, thank you there's value in getting all of us oh. back together for that. Yeah. So uh, unless there's Appreciate an argument that. for yeah. the alternative, nope. um, I think it's a better. When was that? That's Article I. The policies. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, well take. Was, you know. Um, so do you want to take Andy Wills, H. John? Yeah. Um, <coughs> oh yeah, we skip. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah. I'll just go top to bottom. Here's a quick summary. Um, we are here. We're in column H. Obviously, if something's done, it's going to stay done. Oh, sure. I hope so. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to Andy, but one of your goals was to expound and expand charitable giving options, and I just don't see any bandwidth for anyone for that right now, quite quickly. So this is our... Th 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 these are the official 25 goals voted last summer for this, for, for this current fiscal year. Okay. Oh, I, so w when are we going to talk about the ones for next week? Next year. Next fiscal uh, year. After town meeting. Okay. All right. Um, and otherwise, all those goals have been met. Um, Sharon has given me an update on some finance uh, policies. She was in to describe them to you. They're about half done. Um, some of the portion that's not done are requests that have been made to FinCom. We really can't do more than request an OPEB policy. So even though we don't have one from FinCom, um, you know, I suppose the town's effort is, is complete. So Sharon's nearly complete on that. Um, I got an update from Jean a couple days ago on employee retention. Um, it's a tough issue. I, I think we'll just kind of leave it at that for now. We're seeing uh, vacancies for a, a longer period of time. 
as you know, the employment markets are extremely strong, and um, with an override hanging over, <coughs> um, it's not an attractive place to go work if you don't know the whole story. So we're not going to have to wait for the best. Good night. Good yeah. night, everybody. Good night. Good night. How, how, how'd we do? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. You're allowed to bring the numbers and hold them up during the. <laughs> Uh, I'll skip over the ones that are complete. Um, I have I have asked, I don't remember how much discussion I've had with you, uh, but I'm in the middle of collective bargaining. Next week there'll be an update through executive session uh, for the eight unions. And it made logical sense that um, we defer the personnel policies <coughs> till those are complete. Okay. Um, I will say that, well, I'll get back to one of the other goals. Um, let's see. Collective bargaining, again, we should have those uh, wrapped up uh, by the third fiscal quarter. Line 22, you have it at 40% throughout the rest of the year. Do you not because think? Because I don't, I don't know yet. You I don't know what you don't know. All right. Exactly. Um, so we'll pick that up. And cable negotiations, you don't see those yeah. coming to fruition by the end of the year? You're going too fast. Uh, Sorry, line. Housing plan no. done. I, I do want to discuss this section. We'll skip it for yep. now. Uh, cable negotiations. You know, the town, the town council has been, on, you know, in place. Uh, Matt has had some meetings. We did get, uh, not exactly related, but we extended one of the carriers on the water tower. Right. Um, I do want to bring that back in front of the board in April. Um, I guess the question is, what did I imagine cable negotiations for this fiscal year to be? And it turns out it's going to take longer than I imagined, which is why I put 25%. It's going to go on for next year, clearly. Isn't that when it's due? I mean, it's yeah, we're not, we're not in any jeopardy right. by that. And yeah. the opportunity that we've uncovered is um, it's within a three-year window, so we could get both uh, Comcast and Verizon under the same set of negotiations. And whether that's good or bad, I'd, I'd leave that for another day to discuss. Okay. Actually, the uh, our consultant said that that's actually better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to do. If I remember so, correctly. Um, I'm quite sure Matt will be reaching out to uh, Dan and uh, John uh, to set up another meeting on that. Uh, the MWRA North Reading project I had put as 100% complete because I thought North Reading was walking away. We're <laughs> <laughs> interested in us taking him out to dinner again. So. Oh, yeah. really? Um, no, they're taking us out to dinner. Yeah. Yes. Um, they walked away because they believe they had a deal with Andover. And um, my understanding is uh, Andover's town meeting did not agree with the deal. They would not get. They would not honor the 99-year term. So would not the, the North agreement. Reading is highly motivated in coming back to the MWRA and, and Reading if we'll have them. And, and we have spent money um, for them. Then we've been a good neighbor, but you know our, our patience is perhaps a little short. Yep. Yeah. So do we have an MOU with them, or did no. we have one? No. We were in the no, process of, They right? told us to go They told us to stop. Right. Yep. Stop for a year, I think. Yeah, we put a lot of time and effort yeah. into it. Yeah. And, you know, not to say it was wasted, because we made some plan improvements to our system, which are a good thing. But Bob, what's this 99-year agreement you're alluding to? That's um, what they asked North for. Reading had asked for a 99-year agreement with Andover to provide yeah. water, and yeah. I believe the Andover town meeting cut it to 25 years or something like Wasn't that. Good enough. Yeah. And that was not good yeah. enough. With and a rate accelerator at 20 years. I, I was mean, say it was, it was, I mean, there was a series terms. of things that went and on. And a termination yeah. option at five and yeah. 20 yeah. years. So it was like. I don't know town meetings got to negotiate. Well, this one did. Like that. Yeah. My understanding they over, they, is they, they have walked away from Andover, but obviously you can walk away from anyone and walk back. So the town of Reading needs to decide. Look, how much energy we in a Right. Our tone here is going to be a little here. different the second time around. Huh. Yes. Yeah, I, I think it will be a different conversation. I believe it I will be. We too. all, as staff, we all feel differently this time. We, it's like we did our job and now what? <laughs> yeah. Well, the good news is that once you do that, you do all the work and they walk away, they come back, it generally gets done quicker. And we have we'll good see. relations with North Reading. They help yeah, us out quite a we bit do. with the health agent and yeah. many other areas. Oh, yeah. So. We still have very good relations. And they respond on mutual aid, you know, instantly. Their chief was in town. Yep. On that Saturday afternoon. <coughs> yep. Instantly. Right. Any, yeah. other, any other comments from um, the board? Amy and Laura uh, Jem are both working on the Historical Preservation Archival. They've applied for a grant. We won't know till May. So I don't think there's going to be much completed in this fiscal year. But if they get funding, that's a, a better What's the archival story. part of that? Is that also included in the library like really yeah. in some fashion? Yeah, it would probably all be under, be under the library, library, although Laura may have some interest. Yeah. Um, <coughs> 
I don't think we can decide what to do with volunteer board training till you figure out the Board of Selectmen's policy on volunteers, which was a question earlier. So whether that gets tucked in at the end of this fiscal year, I don't know. Okay. And then community events is another thing I would suggest removing. I might give you a <coughs> summary of what we're doing, but it's, to me, just not a priority. Yep, got it. Uh, Long-term planning, I think, is where we need to put a future agenda item together and really talk about all these you issues. You bet. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of big things there. I met with uh, staff today to talk about the cell tower, so I can give you a good update. Mm -hmm. I have a pretty good understanding of the process with the DPW garage. Um, uh, Gene has presented me some options for a master plan, and I will tell you a minimum spend is 150 to 200,000, which I'm not in favor of. Mm -hmm. um, Andy won't be here to give you economic development priorities, but. You saw from the list the 16 projects. His uh, short stay was very worthwhile. Not that he's responsible for all of them. He made Andrew a big, Corona. Yeah, he, yes, Andrew he, Corona. He, he made a big difference. He greased the skids. He absolutely did. He did a really he good job. leave us a roadmap for the uh, development he did. that uh, yep. would involve the DPW land? Um, not as much on that as the other projects, but some of it. Yeah. Are we tasking staff to develop some sort of a, a, a big picture there? Uh, the, we're working actually with our legislators. A pro forma. Analysis to um, show that's people. something I'm going to need to have to yeah. do, and I don't know enough. I, we've met okay. a lot with Wakefield. I know some of the options. You know, broadly, um, at the last time we met, Wakefield <coughs> wanted Reading to handle all the finances mm -hmm. and then just tell them how much to pay. Of course, that's fine with me. Here, give us a lot. Right. Um, they wanted Reading to do whatever the financial portion right. was and then just give them a bill. Right. Perfect. I think we need a step-by-step -step guide as to what would happen, at what point would the sale happen. Uh, would that happen and in tandem with an RFP for the property? I agree with you, and I think yeah. we're still too far, far away. Far away. Bob, too it, specific. Okay. Does, does it make sense? I mean, obviously, we have to replace the end Andrew position. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to reposition the position as someone <coughs> who could be just a, check in to see what reposition? Okay. Reposition Dr. the Howard, position. Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard. <laughs> yeah. The medicine. So that, that you know, so that that position yeah. becomes sort of the, the the lead person on that as a project manager because this is yeah, yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of moving parts to that and and you know yeah. obviously Gene and Julie. They're great, you know, but they're they're torn in different directions. So this is this is a full time job to itself. I mean, Absolutely. when I now think of economic development from where Andrew left us, this is what it is. It's right. this project. Right. And so that we so I agree with you. It's a project manager. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Okay. And that is definitely what is on our minds. Right. And that's a different that's a different skill set. Well, yes. somewhat no, it is. somewhat intersecting, but not the execution of it. Less yeah. sales. Yeah. Bob, I've gotten a couple of questions from uh, email on the cell tower. You, you mentioned an update. Can you say a few words? Uh, just in terms of I want to bring it back in front of the board. I missed that meeting, uh, that selectman's meeting. I saw it later on TV. Um, you know, I'll have the town engineer write you an update, but um, there may be options to put all four carriers back on the water tower. Um, then that's a new development. A in new the water last tower. Three months. A single water tower. Okay. And not have a, a new separate design, tank, a, a separate tank, and not a separate structure. Whether that's better or worse than the alternative, it wasn't an alternative in the past. <coughs> um, there's, as I understand it, there's two good locations and two less good locations. Mm -hmm. That would be, which will cause price differences in the bidding. But um, they're still sort of working out the theory of that to see that there's really four acceptable positions. Because, sure. as a reminder, we have three vendors on the. Uh, tower and tank now, and there's a fourth one yeah. that desperately wants in. Right. Although, does it give us room if there's a fifth or a sixth? If no, it would. So the tower would. A tower, yeah, the tower would. would. So basically, we'd be capping yeah. our capacity. Yes, we would. And revenue. Yes. If we did that, but okay. Yep. Just so you know, Bob, I, uh, when yep. there was foliage up, I took went around that block and took pictures of the siding. Okay. You won't be able to see that tower in the summer while the leaves are up. You will see it from some vantage points in the winter when the leaves are up. You're down. talking about a second tower? Second tower. No, a, a tower on, on top of Instead of a tank. Oh, I see it all the yeah. time from Killam, from down at the like You'll see it. I'm talking about the One structure neighbors. or two structures? Two structures. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which is, of course, we've, you know, we heard yeah. vociferously about a second structure. Yeah, you know, there's a there's an argument to me made plus and finest for each situation. That's your well, decision. Well, well, before I mean now there's two. I mean before there was only one <coughs> option that was presented to get four vendors. Yeah. Correct. Right. So now this is good. That there's a second one we can deliver it on. Is is and just to be clear, we are now going down the path of a tank that does not need to be painted every 15 years. Fiberglass. So it's more expensive. Yeah. yeah. 
it's, it's a cobalt blue, unless you want to pay more for a different color or stripe. We or, could be stoner. Or logo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we need to speak to the issue that was raised about uh, you know relocating the infrastructure on telephone poles. I think that sounds like a very costly alternative that the, well, the, the carriers would have to sign up to. Can, can we at least get uh, so 10,000 foot analysis to put that yeah, together? The night yeah. uh, where you had your discussion, um, <coughs> there's a fellow in the audience. That right. Is yeah. Yeah. He's an yeah. attorney on Beacon Street. No, no, no. This is a person that the staff has hired. Oh, okay. Um, he didn't say very much that night, but right. he can definitely speak to this and will come to okay. it when it's on your agenda. Good. And Ryan is, um, Ryan is running with it? <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just to summarize, he said um, that is a real threat 20 years away. It's not a threat for the next 20 years. What's a threat? Um, dis dissipating the uh, cell coverage. Oh, it's not. Uh, it's, it's, he, he said in, in Reading, no way. It's not going to happen. No way because I don't understand it's not what finances? Or? They, they want to have one physical location okay. where a repair person can go <coughs> fix one thing. They don't want to have, you know, 500 telephones. That's what we oh, need to hear. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Well, plus uh, you got to relocate. That works in a dense sure. urban environment, maybe. Right. It does right. not work in the suburbs. Is there any? You know, technology. I mean, do, are we going to hear anything from ultimately the people who are the tenants as to what's going to happen with the service itself? Which is frankly, yeah, they not were there. Very they were good. there that night. Thank no, um, some of the service is horrible, and <coughs> yeah. I can't uh, get in my public house. safety department is not happy no, right. that there's there's gaps of coverage in this town, which is not a good thing. No. And, and it, they really are significant too. Yeah. So would the proposal be to make this higher so that it gets more? Open? Is that is well, that they, the, they is need that to the, come at us with the engineering about what they need for better coverage. When will right. when's the right time to talk about the concept? It, when would it be in the calendar to talk um, about? We're gonna we have a staff meeting planned in early April, so after that. Because one of the options was, and I know this wasn't didn't get a lot of interest, but is there a way to mount the radio portion above the water portion and still preserve the security of both? Is you know, building two things that are tall, isn't there a way to stack them and get um, them? You know, Don't need to answer it, but... Well, the answer is you can pretty much do anything you can imagine. Um, I don't know that you'd need that unless you are building out space for five and six in that's, the future. That's the thought. Yeah. That gives you the option to expand. Right. Yeah, in which case you're going to get pretty high. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. Probably another 60, but it's on top of a thing that's already tall and you yeah. don't pick it up. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll put some of these um, on your uh, agenda, uh, maybe even in March, so all you right. have some space. That's all. Thanks. All right. Thank you. This now brings us to the last item of the formal agenda, <coughs> item J, the RMLD payments. Bob, you have a slide? Uh, I have a little oh, something please, I can say. Go ahead. But, but yeah, let me set this up a little history on the uh, CAB and the RMLD. Uh, as part of the 20 year agreement originally entered into in 1990, uh, the uh, Citizens uh. Advisory Board was formed, which is it consists of members from the four RMLD service towns appointed by their boards of selectmen to advise the RMLD on uh, financial and other issues. It was part of the, uh, the grand bargain that the uh, caused Wilmington to stop talking about seceding from the RMLD. Uh, at that point also, uh, in lieu of payment, tax payments were created for each of the four towns, albeit at a lower level than what Reading gets. <coughs> and on February 12th, 1998, the CAB voted to establish what's called the Payment the Town of Reading Subcommittee. I have the minutes here from that. Uh, all the players that are named here are long gone. Uh, the, the committee was to consist of uh, two members from the Board of Commissioners, the RMLD Commissioners, two members from the CAB, and one member from the Town of Reading, which is myself, for direction of the Board. Uh, and in that uh, discussion, uh, they did approve it unanimously. Uh, one of the provisions that was uh, added was that uh, if an impasse were arrived at in the negotiations, that uh, there would be a ratepayer compensated uh, uh, facilitator brought in to uh, to help the the deal come. come and the to date first. of that agreement is 1998. That is 1998, and I have that here. Uh, fast forward to May 1st, 2007, annual town meeting. An instructional motion was presented, <coughs> originally by Bill Brown. 17, Dan. 2017. Huh? Se sorry, 17. Yes, third night of town meeting. 
uh, in light of the town's difficult financial situation, to study the Reading Municipal Light Department with an objective of increasing annual revenues to the town of Reading, and included this phrase, including the possibility of a sale in the longer term. That last phrase is amended out, uh, on, out, out after some other discussion and motions failed by Mr. Peter Brown uh, to just leave the first part of that. <coughs> that was ultimately passed by town meeting, and that was the uh, genesis for uh, calling the CAB together with the RMLD to, on that committee. Uh, immediately after town meeting, I endeavored to contact Chairman Pacino uh, to set up a meeting as soon as possible. This kind of went back and forth sure. in the late spring through sure. the summer. Uh, finally, we had a meeting in September. Uh, through no lack of effort on your part. I right. tried. I, I, I had to be clear. Other intermediaries uh, urging, it, urging Mr. Pacino. We did have that one meeting and then went dormant again until today. This, we had our second meeting in 10 months mm -hmm. today. And we did make some progress. And second meeting in 10 months. 10 months. <clears throat> uh, and in the meantime, nothing had, no offers had been forthcoming from the RMLD or the CAB uh, until today when actually the two members, not the full RMLD board, made a proposal. And that proposal was <clears throat> that return on investment to the town of Reading would continue to be adjusted upward each year by the hire of the Boston, Brockton, Nashua, CPI, or 2%. In other words, that would be the floor, 2%. If the CPI were higher, it would prevail in a given year. So, so in other words, not to keep up with Prop 2 and a half. Right. Correct. Okay. They also made a request to change their year end to a calendar year. Uh, it's costing them money to do it on the basis of the town's they fiscal year. They seem to have a lot of money, so yeah. that would seem to be a problem. And then there's some discussion about a solar project. My counter proposal was to change the 2% to 5%. Mm -hmm. And I further stated that uh, I, as one selectman, was willing to sponsor an amendment to study and effectuate the sale of the RMLD mm -hmm. and place it on the Springtown meeting warrant. What was the reaction to that? Uh, jaws were dropping all around the room. Okay. But I, I stress that I don't really want to do that. What I want to get to is, is a accommodation on this number that's more suitable yeah. for the town. But the original percent. instructional motion comprehended any and all outcomes. It did. Okay. It indeed did. I, I was just curious. I mean, you on you, you know, on your own, yeah. gave a five percent proposal. There was no discussion here. Much As a duly designated representative, and now I'm bringing it back to you. Yeah. Was there a reaction to the five percent? Um, they, they saw what I was trying to do. I think. Um, did they respond? Did they no. counter propose? Phil's going to bring it back to his board next week. Uh, they will kick it around. Uh, I don't know if I should be at that meeting or not. I'm open either way. Well, if it's an open meeting. Yeah. Is it their full board? Yeah, will be the full board meeting on the 20 yeah, 22nd. Second. Yeah. Do you know if um, the board had voted on the proposal, the initial proposal he'd made? No, he said it was just he and Stumpick. Okay, came so up it's, not, it's not a motion of the board. Or right, board. so okay. they have to still formally approve that. So that's not even a. So this is a, this is a. That's a, What this is is a trial balloon. <coughs> it's a proposal. They gave you a, a trial balloon that right. did not have. To your point, Barry. I mean, their board didn't, <coughs> you know, approve a, you know, a, an offer. Um, this is, you know, unfortunately, this is the kind of dialogue, in my opinion, that should have been going on for the last ten months, and the fact that, you know, it, <coughs> I believe that there hasn't been good faith action towards a resolution of this. Um, I agree. I, I think that yeah. I think that um, if both parties are motivated to do something, you can get right. you can get projects like this, efforts oh, like yeah. this don't take a long time. I, I this, this is not hard. No, it's not hard. Right. Correct. It's, it's not we have two months before town meeting. In fact if this ha if this happened the next two weeks, no warrant article need go on. Quite frankly. Well I'm I personally I'm <coughs> quite unsatisfied with both the progress as well as the yeah. tenor of both these meetings. If there's a certain lack of um, energy and, and uh, urgency and it strikes me that uh, you're in the middle of a negotiation yes in an environment where we own the asset yes so I don't even understand what that means and we all have read the balance sheet it's like arguing with yourself uh, we've all read the balance sheet and the income statement the organization is fairly flush with unrestricted cash and has even more restricted cash <coughs> and they add to that on a regular basis by several million dollars a year so um, and they, pre they presented the document tonight to make it, make things look even worse, and, and they may. Uh, the statement was made that uh, the prior uh, Vin Cameron, who ran the RMLD, let 
the physical plant go to hell. And they're, they're fixing it now. That's many moons ago. Yes. I think that's, you know, that's already baked in the pie. So there's I, more I capital that uh, is needed. Dan, and Dan do we, um, no. before hang, hang we... On, hang on, Barry. So where I want to go with this is I do want to um, ask Ray to comment on what would be needed in a warrant article to yes. facilitate the sale of RMLD. Mm -hmm. Not to f actuate, not but to, to vote on it, not to mm -hmm. vote on it, but rather to understand. So we speak from authority and speak from due process. Okay. What I'm would be required, well. yeah. Yeah. and the reason is I don't yeah. think this progress gets any better unless there is a genuine realization that sale is a potential outcome. Now you may view that this. I'm, I'm not negotiating with something I own. Yeah. We're just not going to do that. Yeah, we have taxpayers who are asking for four million dollars out of their pockets. We're hurting, right? And I've got. <clears throat> but you're not going to sell a valuable asset that you cannot recreate without any some type of any kind of a public discourse well, on it. I think that there's, we're a, not even I think there's a lot. Of, yeah. I know, but you're putting yeah, yeah. it out there. Nobody said that. I, I agree with you. Right. There's a whole lot of process and a whole lot of wickets. Bob, what ahead. are people going to see tomorrow when your article? Sale of RML, right? No, that's what they want to hear. No. Right. So, no, I, there's I an instructional, there's I'm sorry, I'm going to argue with you. Okay. The instructional Go motion ahead. anticipates that a sale is a potential outcome. We were, are derelict in not having analyzed what that means. That's all I'm trying to do is what well, does that mean? Proposers had that in mind when they made the original motion. I'm not suggesting we do it, but if we don't know what it entails, we certainly can't comprehend what doing it will mean. And That's I'm clear eyed about what that could mean. I'm reading something from 1990. Your Reading must authorize RMLD sale by a two thirds vote at two town meetings that may have to go to the voters. There are issues with the existing power uh, contracts, whether or not Reading would be liable to pay them. Do you know, Bob, who's reliable on the power contracts? Is that on We're our looking books at or their books? We you know? Yeah, I, I haven't seen their language, but we're in gonna, general, we're liable for RMLD. So we're holding the liability, and we're not. So is anybody, um, Dan, in, in your research, yeah. there's 30, 40 municipal light yep. departments, all of them have some type of a agreement with their host community. They may or may not. Um, have we researched, you know, what is, a, you know, what's a typical, um, you know, <laughs> dividend per kilowatt hour, <coughs> dividend per... Uh, uh, net operating income, because you know you came up with five percent seems reasonable to me. Yep. Uh, they're two percent. You know, should we be at seven percent? Is two percent like better than most? I well, mean, the CPI we has been as high as four, like fifteen yeah. years ago. My voice. But if you look yeah. at the rate of growth, the cumulative rate of growth, it's it's not even staying up with Prop Two and a half. <laughs> That's correct. And I do believe that as an asset we own that's generating cash. We are, it's our asset. This is essentially a dividend paying stock. You can't get the dividends out of it. It's your. Well, you're money. getting a dividend out of it, you're just not getting as high a dividend as you Well, like. it's ours. And, I, and I, well, I'm not it going. It sells, it's not ours. So it's like. Well. I, I mean, I, look, I, I just think that this is way putting the cart way, way before the horse. Okay. When. Well, I'm in a, I'm in a very different place. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired of hearing that our schools need money and our towns need right. money when I've got effectively. A revenue net, a revenue generator, and a, a profits generator over an Ash Street. All we're asking for is a better deal. Right. We're getting insufficient communication, and what I'll call is insincere communication. And if the instructional motion comprehends the potential for sale, what does the instructional motion say, John? Read, read, read it, it again, please. Because I think it's, it's pretty clear. It's that up to and including anything. The, uh, no, that was no. amended out. Actually, instruct. The, I'll read the original. And the one. amendment failed. Instruct the Board of Selectmen in light of the town's difficult financial situation to study the Reading Municipal Light Department with an objective increasing annual revenues to the town of Reading. Stop. It went on, and this was amended out, including the possible possibility of a sale okay. in the longer term. Was it amended out? Did, that was amended it, out. Okay. I said that. But it doesn't restrict it. <coughs> Well, it was amended out. Okay, but so, we're not we're not restricted to only that language. Go ahead, Bob. My understanding, and <coughs> my memory's not perfect, okay. certainly. It's an LG, don't worry. Was was that, it, um, yeah. All the instructional motions did not pass because one of the RMLT commissioners stood up and offered her this alternative That's right. path. That's right. Well, this alternative path isn't yielding. It's I understand yielding. that. So, uh, you know, everything that was discussed is fine. That is exactly what happened. The town meeting didn't actually right. vote on something. They accepted RMLD's right. word right. that this process it, it was satisfied. Work. It ain't working. So, yep. okay. so, so that, that's what I'm saying. So, so if this is saber rattling, I get it. Yeah. Um, you know, Barry, I, 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 think it's I think it's unproductive, but well, 
consensus well, mind. I, I think you can get to a better deal I, without that. But I, I don't. I, I'm going to take exception to the comment. It's not saber rattling. <laughs> I don't. I don't say. You're so. not going to sell it. I but you're going to threaten to sell it. No, That's I never said. Barry, I'm sorry. I'm not saying I'm going to sell it. What I'm going to say is we have an asset. Right. We don't know what the process is. We don't know the valuation of it. We don't know what the, the entities that might be interested in it. We're dealing from a position of ignorance. All I want to do is get smart. That's fine. And there's, there's no action there. It's just a process of getting educated. We know very little about this. It's not an area that we've delved into. Where we are, I'm totally unsatisfied with. We are I, not getting. I, I agree. I think that there's just a different way of going about it. Um, um, well, you know what? We tried, tried it for six months and nine months. It isn't working. Question. Yes. Best offer on finance committee. Would it be possible to um, invite RMLD and FinCom's financial manager and the board of selectmen to have a joint meeting sure. to further understand it prior to setting the instructional motion forward? Um, I, the, the instructional motion in question was set aside. There is no instructional motion. No, no, there is one, but with the clause taken out. That was voted. Yeah. But I understood that, that the chairman stood up and there was no vote taken on that. Is that accurate? No, that's not true. They tried that and they tried to withdraw it and it was not allowed because so unanimous consent. So did a version pass at the it, very end there? Yeah. Something to fool. Oh, instructional a, motion carried there is an as instructional amendment. motion. Okay. Already. Did, did, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. That okay. passed. That's with, what I was With the okay. sale All right. clause amended out. Okay, gotcha. My, my, my request is, is related to, but <coughs> not in conflict with the instructional motion. I would like to understand the process, the valuation, <coughs> the potential timeline for a sale, just to educate ourselves. Um, in response to Vanessa's suggestion, I would suggest you all get posted and attend the meeting at RMLD is having on the 22nd. Could do that. That's when this will be on the agenda. Um, you know, I, I think it's best to stop there. Let's just say that the warrant closes on the 27th. Does the selectman anticipate any action? The 22nd has to be the date. Right. For a resolution. Should we be posted also? Yeah. Okay. yeah we will. We will. Yeah. But the principle is I expect that we get a better progress <laughs> and better results than mm -hmm. one and a half meetings over seven months. Yep. That, that just is bad faith. And clearly, the reason that there was an amendment out of that last language was that the chairman yeah. of the RMLD stood up and said, we can certainly work this out another way. He said what you were okay. saying. He did. However, eight months later, yeah. we get we get a scrap of paper Obvious. that has that is nothing coming from their board. It's you know, and it, and it what appears to me to be a you know a rather disingenuous approach to aggressively solving the problem or expanding the discussion about a new agreement. I personally think that a new agreement is called for. I agree. <laughs> No. That's what we wanted all along. Right. Well, yeah, and just to be clear, um, and I think you know this, but um, you know, Dan has tried very hard to get meetings for the last no, nine, I, ten months. No, clearly. So, you know, I don't want to ascribe any intention of not meeting, but they just haven't met that part of the bargain. Nope. They've promised to meet. They promised to work this out. I believe there was a full understanding around the table tonight that this is not rocket science. Right. Yeah. Well, that this is just a simple thing that should have been hammered out easily. Well, and the other thing so to John's to point is there was a commitment made in public meeting, and yeah. you're as good as your word. Right. And we've tried. The other side has not been responsive. And I think it's incumbent upon us to at least know what we're talking about when we're asked. If you went to the final point, how would you do it? What would it take? How long would it take? Et cetera, et cetera. We haven't done any of that work, and I feel naked not knowing. Well, well we, we did it in 1990. Can I ask Yes. Dan, did you, offer a, did you offer another meeting before we closed the warrant? Uh, they we are tried planning. To. You tried. They, they couldn't do it till March 9th, I think. It. That's our next meeting. So, okay, <laughs> let me understand. Of, of the subcommittee. Right. Yeah. You know, today's the 13th. Right. Yeah. Yet again, they were unable to get together with you, four people, between now and the 27th. Awesome. And so that offer was made and rejected. They weren't available. Uh, are we dealing with the President of the United States here? <laughs> I mean, I hope not. That's what I mean. There's a certain lack of sincerity, and I, I think it's incumbent upon us to say, look, guys, you're, you belong to us. If we, do, if we did want to move ahead, I know it's costly, I know it's time consuming, <laughs> but here's the process we'll use. Yes. 
Does ROV have regular meetings scheduled? Yeah. Yes, they do. They have their own elected Third board of Thursday commissions. Thursday or every month. Is there a reason why members of the board of have attended the regularly scheduled meetings in order to discuss this? This wouldn't necessarily be an open session. This would be a discussion. Um, it wasn't the agreed upon plan, right. either. The agreed upon plan the was subcommittee. that there was a, and it's actually <laughs> written into the, um, it's either, I don't know that it's a it's bylaw. In a, it's in a prior RMLD town agreement. Yes, it's in an agreement that clearly lays out exactly how this negotiation should go on and who should be involved in it. And we picked that up and have tried now for over eight months to execute against the agreement that has been in place for since 19... I was going to say 30 years, as I remember. Well, there's nothing that obviates us from being able to go to their meeting as, uh, uh, you right. know, uh, and just just as people came in here in public comment and asked us to look right. at something. I, I think that's right. fair, right. but we, we did, I mean, we right. have a person assigned right. to this process that is detailed by agreement, and I agree, we can go to their meeting and we can have a public comment, and that's fine. But, you know, I do think we have to follow the proscribed, and you know, I, approach. I repetitively asked Mr. Pacino if the RMLD was going to take this issue up in any specific future meeting. What he did the first after our first meeting is to give the same financial report to the meeting, but not elicit any discussion on this issue. He said, oh, we're not going to talk about it tonight, Dan. There's so, a certain lack of sincerity yeah. and a certain lack of urgency. Well, there is a board of directors of the RMLD. We can certainly um, yeah, we're talking to yeah, write, to, write to the or, or communicate with them our displeasure on this, and, and, and that becomes part of the public record with could. RMLD. All of those steps should be go. all of that should be done. I agree, but um, what would be the process to get to get informed about the, the legal mechanism by which we would? I think that um, you, as a board, as many as possible, should attend on the 22nd. Right. Um, see what discussion happens. That may solve the whole issue okay. that night. I like this, the idea of being posted. This, uh, yeah. February 27th? Yeah. Yep. Down at the Fe uh, headquarters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Before your yeah. closing of the warrant. Bob, well, can I ask you a question to make compromise? Well, yeah, I will. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Bob, I did forward those two documents okay, to, thank you. to uh, Ray. You can okay. work with him to review them. They're, they're old. They need to be updated. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes. I would say I would suggest, based on your analysis, that we be prepared on the 27th to do one thing or the other. Mm -hmm. I think we should pre be prepared to place a warrant. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, well, and that's pilot. not that doesn't call for a vote. I'm right. just suggesting that I'd love to see everything get worked out beautifully on the 22nd or before the 27th as a result of their next full meeting. That would be wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. If well, not, the 27th, if not, then, you know, based on, you know, what you've suggested, I, mm -hmm. I think we should be, I would, I would ask you to be prepared for that. Yeah, I, I'm tired of waiting, and, and the voters expect more. Yeah. We're, we're going after them for $4 million, and I fully expect to be pummeled asking, why in the world aren't you uh, looking at a renegotiation of the agreement? Why aren't you looking at a way to get some additional dollars out of an asset you own? Why in the world is the cash uh, uh, in an asset that we can't pull it out of? And why isn't it benefiting the school children and the <coughs> teachers and well, the taxpayers well, of the town? To, to, to be clear, Mr. Chair, um, we did receive $2.3 million dividend. 2.4. Oh, I stand corrected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, you sit revised. <laughs> <laughs> the hours late. <laughs> right. But Repurposed. <laughs> so I mean, you know, to, to, to make it, you know, your your comments are well taken, Mr. Chair, but. You know, you make it sound like we've been getting nothing. We get $2.4 million. Can we get a better deal? Absolutely. Do we deserve a better deal? Absolutely. And I think we should take the steps to do it. And I just think that we're that actually getting more than that when you include the pilot and you the include the service expense, the revenues. We're getting a number that's much higher. Plus, there's another 240k we get right. with the other four. Right. Right. And also the expense that they reimburse us to. Our my deal. point is that the agreement is not <coughs> reasonable given the index used and given Prop Two and a Half realities. And I'd feel differently if the organization was was cash poor. They're not cash poor. There, it's, a, it's a very profitable enterprise, and it's time to renegotiate the agreement or mm -hmm. find a way to to, rev it, to monetize the asset. Bob, uh, I want to make sure I understand um, what it is that I mean. Ray will be here, so you can ask right. me questions on the fly. But 
I'll ask them to prepare some kind of generic language to begin the investigation of a sale, and I'll just leave it at that for tonight. And actually, I'd like to kind of know some yeah. of the things we don't know. I'd like to know how many municipal uh, utilities have actually sold. I, I have the answer. One. Need them. So it was a while ago. <laughs> how long? 1908. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so clearly... Not, not too many reasons. And, and when was the last time a municipal light company was established? Yeah, that's also the 100 years, years ago. So they're not making any more of well, them. Those who have them aren't selling them. Fair, there's there's, a, there's reason a reason for that. For that. Right. Not, so that's I'm, not, just, I'm just putting it in the... You, right. you're, you want information? I just want that information. Right. But that, the suggestion is it's not possible. I'm not convinced it's not possible because I'm ignorant. We all are. That's one of the reasons. DPU has been lobbied to make it very difficult. Well, I'm a little surprised that you would, would not welcome the idea of bringing this group to the table, our asset to the table, when they have been relatively I, unwilling to do so. I, I think if this is the way we do it, then maybe that's the no, way we do nothing it. Nothing in my comments suggested that I don't want to bring them uh, to a, a large table. So, uh, you know. Okay. So that's that's a request, Bob. So okay. Ray's busy, I know. This will take some time. Yeah, um, that's fine. Did you want to throw the chart up on the table that's in the panel? The, 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 uh, is it in the package? It is. It's page... Um, Yep. You may have a different package. It's right after the... Page uh, one, uh, 94. On. Say again. 94. Policies. Yep. After the policies. It's 94 out of 139. Is that the same book you oh, have? I see what you're saying. Sorry, yeah. 90, 94. 94 on the top. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Always put the blooming number on. <laughs> All right, now Mayor is sick. Can you make that a little blow bigger? that up a bit? So the, the rate change... Oh, what happened? And the rate change in the RMLD earnings distribution over the last four years is 1.5%, um, including the, the pilot payment in lieu of taxes and the operating budget support for the work our accounting group does um, are even lower. So this is unsustainable and it's unacceptable. And it's, it's, it's not even a discussion in my book. We've we got to find a way to get a better agreement that at least is, matches the realities of the world we're living in. And if you, if you get 200 or 250 million for it and you turn that into a time value of money, that's another, take 4% of that. You could do that forever. So, and 4% of 250 million would be okay. All right. Um, Anybody ever have NSTAR? National Grid? Yeah, they just fixed the yes. gas pipes out here okay. multiple times. That's they did a job. pretty good job. Okay. As far as I know, all the neighbors were nope. pretty happy. Nope. I think you jump into a lot of conclusions. Uh, nobody there. wants to take that in an inappropriate way. <laughs> I, nobody I mean, wants this to take this. This is a, you yeah. know, this is an effort to I get this information, I, and we're it's gonna, an effort. We're all going to be there on the 22nd. We so are. Let's just, we are. Let's just leave it at that. All right. The only other topics tonight are the approval of the minutes. So we'll go to the uh, movement of November 7th. Yes, Mr. Chairman, move to uh, approve the minutes of uh, November 7th. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Well, I have Any further comment. discussion? Page four. Uh, I, th I think Bob said something about air. It should be ERR. I don't have the place on the, the minutes. I think he had AIR. It should be ERR. Page four of the. Uh, Oh, that's 1114. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Seventh is fine. Yeah. Seventh? Oh. Seventh is good. Okay. Yeah. Can't read my chicken scratches here. Uh, I don't think I had any changes here. Yeah. So we have a, do we have a second? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Second. Um, any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? We do Four approve zero. the minutes of November 14th, 2017. 14. I think I had a change here. Yeah. So I have page four. I think oh, this here is, it is. I found it. Yeah. ERR. Yeah. Right here, Caitlin. ERR instead of AIR. Oh. Must be your voice recognition okay. software. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure how to make this change. I also have an edit. Um, my comments during the meeting, which included the what reading page of the Sorry? What page? Oh, sorry. This starts at uh, PDF, uh, Adobe page 100. Um, my comments during the meeting were, some of them were extemporaneous, so I don't know that this representation is exactly what I said. I know I deviated on a number of times. I don't know how to best represent that. This may have been my prepared notes, but it wasn't what I, what I said in the entirety. Where, where about John? Um, for example, um, 
I know for a fact, I'd have to go back to the video, but I, when we talked in particular about, what paragraph am I on? One, five paragraphs on the bottom on page 100. two. Um, I believe we said that the board re recognizes statements uh, may, uh, made during the meeting may have crossed the lines into deliberation such that a proper posting would have been required. I think at that moment I described that um, <coughs> a couple of things, but I, they're not reflected in here, and I'd have to go back to the video to, to recall exactly yeah. what it was, but I remember deviating at that point and at least one other point. How best should we reflect that Actually, this, this is, is kind of what I remember you said. Did you, uh, I did you write things down? I pasted from what you said. Yeah, you may have made comments different. That's what I'm saying. The, the words on the page didn't match with the yeah, words okay. that came out of the okay. mouth. So you have to really did, go did back. There's things it. in there that you occasionally, thought I, that you occasionally said? I, I, I no, occasionally I add or amplify as Just, we all do. Well, if you want to, if you want to hold on this till you. All right. If you want to go back and look at the video, I'll right. find it. All right. I mean, right. you know, Just, this isn't mission critical that it get approved. Right. Just as an aside, did everyone see the note from the AG? Uh, they essentially took no action, but they did admonish us that right. even a single conversation could be construed as deliberation. Which I understand. Was they took no action because I think wasn't the the, the complaint didn't. Yeah, it might have been a technicality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll take the action to go back and watch the video. So um, um, I'm going to vote against approval of November 14th. Why don't we just put it on hold? Yeah, let's just table. table. Right. Move to table. table. All right. Yep. All those in favor of tabling the motion 14? Yeah. 4 0. Thank you. Move to approve the minutes of December 28th, 2017. <clears throat> Do I have a second? Second. No changes. No changes. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Move to approve the minutes of December 20th, 2017. Anybody? Second. I have one change on page two. Uh, strike the words of overtime. I think you were trying to refer to the override. But, you know, I think of overtime was in there, but you could just take the of overtime out. Where? Somewhere what? on that page. Of overtime? Page two. Yeah. Oh, I may have been in the wrong minutes. See that? I don't see your name. Oh, that's the wrong page, page two. Let's see if I can remember where it was. That's the only thing you've said was page two is right there. I got the wrong minutes again. What 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 page Dan on the December twentieth ones, right? There's two sections here and here. Hey. That's page two. No, don't go by that. Go by here. Yeah. Well it's hundred and six or C six two, the same thing. What was the first page of the minutes? <coughs> here. Okay. Oh, Mr. Enzo. Up overtime, I got it. Yeah. What, what do you want me to change it to? Just strike the words of overtime. Okay. Where's that up here? It's like the middle of the page of page, page two. Middle of page two. Okay, well, you've got it. I can't find I it. I got it. All right. All right. All right. Um, any further comments? <coughs> no? All those in favor of the uh, minutes as amended, 4-0. Mm -hmm. Any other business to come before the board? If not, all those in favor, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. I have a second for Mr. Halsey. All those in favor? 4-0 at 9.30 exactly. Good night, everybody. Thank you.